All right, we are live. Hello, Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We're so excited to be here with you on Friday night, which is fun. So first, our first Friday one, which is really fun. Yeah. Um, we're, we're having a wild and crazy crafty Friday night. <laughs> All right, it's a wild and crazy crafting party. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, thank, thank you guys for stepping in. Thank you. Thank you to everybody that's joining us live. And if you are catching the replay, I know quite a few people commented um, that they were already planning on watching the replay at some point this weekend. We welcome you as well. Yes, and the replay will be, we'll put it up once uh, this live is over. Yes. Hey everybody, oh my gosh, we've got people saying hello from all over. We got somebody from, uh, Melissa from Anaheim, which uh, means that yep. she's also melting in the heat today. It's yes. 95 today. Uh, it was over 100 when I came. Oh, it was over 100. It's this better over here on the East Coast. I know. I had my lawn fun sweatshirt. I even brought it, but it is not a sweatshirt day here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yay. Hi, everyone. Oh, from Ontario, Ohio, Michigan. Oh, oh it's my birthday. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's birthday Eve. Oh, I love that. Eve. Hope you have some fun Eve, tomorrow. Paula. Oh, it hit 103 in Anaheim. Yep. So yeah, it was 101 when I was pulling in this morning, this afternoon. Yeah. Oh my goodness. NorCal, Washington, the Netherlands. Wow. Minnesota. Oh, oh people God. are digging your shirt, Jen. I do too. It's so cute. I got it specifically for this and for it's, my class. I like that it's like very, it's very branded for our cards today. Right. I was like on point for once. <laughs> I am so not a fashionista, so. <laughs> um, so if you guys, if this is your first time joining us for Create With Us, uh, Kelly Marie and I host these around the new release. So we did two for the spring release. So we did one back in March, um, which was our very special cards. And then now we're doing very rainy day. Um, and what we do is this is a free mini class. All of the details are on the Lawn Fawn website, which you guys can see the link to that down in the get your creative juices flowing, a fun way for us all to get together and chat and craft. Um, if you're making identical cards to us, that's great. If you're making semi-identical cards to us, that's great. If you're working on something completely different or not crafting at all, that's great too. Um, <laughs> Really want you to join us. This was a fun excuse for Kelly and I to be able to get together and then also spend some time um, with you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. But on the on the website, um, on lawnfawn.com, if you see that website at the bottom of the screen, there is a downloadable handout. So if you do want to play along or maybe another day you want to play along, um, you can always download those handouts. Uh, they have all the details for the cards. They have my coloring guides that I'm going to show you guys tonight, which I'm using Copic markers, but you guys can use any coloring medium that you would like. I think the coloring guides are still really helpful. Um, and they're just a great stepping off point, I think. So yeah. And this is what these handouts look like. So when you go to the site, you can print this out and you can keep these two or print out multiple copies for the coloring guides. And so I've got mine front and back because our printer automatically does front and back here at work. But you can see there's nice close up photos and um, and all the prep pieces that you need. So if you didn't print this out yet, you can go check it out and it's a free resource. We have them for all of the classes, all the Create With Us classes that we've done and they're, they're all listed on that site. So not only could you print out the coloring guides for this class, but any of the other ones we've taught as well. Yeah. And, and the, um, there's a couple people that are new to Lawn Fun. So first time watching and first time ordering from Lawn oh, Fun. And well, someone welcome. first started the other day, which is so exciting. So welcome, you guys. We're really thrilled to have you hanging out and crafting with us today. <laughs> Well, and I want to say a big happy birthday to Lawn Fawn. 12 years. So awesome. Happy I know. Birthday. I can't believe it. Every time I'm like, oh my gosh, it doesn't feel like 12 years have passed. It's wild to me. It just, it's 
just time has just flown. Um, but yeah, it's Lanfon's 12th birthday. And to celebrate on Lanfon.com, we're doing 15% off through tomorrow. So we did yes, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So um, if there's anything you've had your eye on, definitely want to check out the website for the 15% off. It's a fun way to get to celebrate our birthday. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are enabled to want anything after tonight's uh, mini class, you guys can take advantage of that <laughs> awesome discount. All right, well, I am going to flip the screen so you guys can see my hands, but you'll still be able to see Kelly and I all night. We'll be chatting with you. We will do our best at answering questions. Rebecca is in the background at Lawn Fawn headquarters, and I believe she's commenting on YouTube. And then we have Shari, our other East Coast Fawny. She's behind the scenes, and she is commenting over on Facebook. So we're like all hands on deck tonight. We're so excited. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. And a lot of people are saying they've been taking advantage of the sale, which is awesome. Um, and um, people just uh, stocking up on paper, which is great. Um, and thank you for all of the happy birthday, guys. It means so much. We really, really just excited. And honestly, we've been here for 12 years because of you guys. So thank you so much. <laughs> Yay. All right. So this is my hands. Um, and I'm just going to do a quick little shameless. Um, I had strawberries on my nails for my berry fun class last weekend. And I told everybody in class, I would try to be creative with my nails for tonight. I did a little um, umbrella, which didn't come out the best, but it's still cute. And then I did little rain clouds and some little raindrops. So That's just showing, so cute. showing my peeps real quick. Um, I love that. Not as cute as the strawberries, but I still think they're a lot of fun. All right. So these are the um, Copic colors I'm going to be using tonight. And again, on the handout, I always put this swatch. Um, on that handout for you guys. So that way, if you don't have the same exact Copic colors, or maybe you're coloring with a different medium, which is totally okay as well, you can kind of swatch out your own to find maybe similar colors. But remember, you also can go totally rogue and do whatever colors you guys would like. But that is that. And I thought we would just dive right in and we will start coloring the bears, the big bears, because they're kind of it's kind of nice, Kelly. I feel like I've been coloring so many little critters. It's really nice to be coloring nice. a bigger critter. Right? I really like him. Like, we usually yeah. have so many tiny things, so it's nice to have that that difference, you know? <laughs> so, so adorable. Um, so, again, um, on the handout, you guys um, have the coloring guides, and I always show, like, step one. I tend to almost always do two-color blending with my Copic markers. Um, and so I always so show step one, which I always start with my dark marker. And then I show you step two where I'm blending it out. And then step three where I'm filling it in. And I'll explain it as I go. Um, but if you weren't able to download the handout and you want to play along with us tonight, even bringing up the coloring guides, maybe on another device, or if you're watching us on your laptop, you could bring them up on the phone. I think it's helpful to have them in front of you, but I will bring my coloring up to the screen as I work on them. All right, so we're gonna start with the bear um, and we're gonna color him with my most favorite brown combo that I've been using for 15 years, uh, E33 and E37. Um, and like I mentioned, I like to start with the dark marker. And the reason why I start with the dark marker is so that I won't um, accidentally keep coloring over the light area and then I don't lose that light area. And I'll kind of explain it as I go. But one thing too, when I'm using a dark color to lay down the shadow, I'm actually only doing a very little bit. You, It's kind of deceiving. You think maybe you need to add a lot more, but you really, really don't. And when I think of where I want a shadow, I tend to pick a side and then also do crevices. So in this instance, I'm kind of shadowing him on the right on his face. And then I'm doing crevices. I did like at the cuff of his paw, where he's holding the umbrella, and then where the raincoat is kind of hanging down on his legs. And as long as you are um, consistent with your coloring, it's all going to look wicked cute no matter what. You don't need to, uh, you know, 
worry about a light source or worry about what season it is. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm unable to zoom in anymore, you guys, but I will hold up my um, coloring as I go and kind of explain it as I go as well. So hopefully that will help you guys. So once I've done the shadow, I'm going to go in with my lighter marker, which in this case, I'm using the E33. And I'm just concentrating right where I put that dark down. And I'm blending the two together with, um, if you're using an alcohol-based marker, in order to blend them together, you need to saturate the paper. Um, and so by continuously dabbing or doing little circles or whatever technique you like to do, that makes the two blend together and it'll make your shadow a little bit thicker, just like you can see here. And then once I have that done, I continue with the um, light marker and I finish filling in the rest of the bear minus, you know, his raincoat and his snout. But I'm filling in the rest of his fur with just one layer of this E33. And that will give us the true lightest version of the E33. And that's why I don't color my bear all E33 first, because I don't want to accidentally keep coloring over and over and over. All right. And then if you have any harsh lines on the right side where we did the shadow, what I do is I continue with that light marker and I just flick out from the edge. And what this is, is doing is kind of giving you an in-between color between the shadow that we created with the two colors blended together and the light that we just laid down with one marker. And then we have a really cute brown bear. And then and here, I know, oh, oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. With mine, I actually almost like blended mine out too much. So I'm going to go back to the dark marker and just reinforce the area where Jen said to put the shadows and that's going to give me a little bit more of that shadow oh perfect, so go back perfect. And like kind of redo it so if that happened to anybody else and jen a there's a question somebody wants to know if you always use the smaller nib so um i've talked about this before and i do have a copic 101 blog post on my um blog um but i like the copic originals that's just what i started with i know that it's I'm kind of the minority in the crafting world, but I do like having that little bullet nib. And what I've done is I've changed the broad tip to be a brush tip. And the brush tip for an original is shorter. And so I find that I have more control and it doesn't let out too much ink as opposed to the sketch nib, which is a super brush. And that's why sometimes people struggle with um, a lot of ink coming out. But what I suggest to people, because I understand maybe you've already bought a bunch of Copics and, you know, sketch is the, ro the road you went, is you can change your broad tip to be a little bullet nib, and that will help you with some of the smaller images from Lawn Fawn. So hopefully that answers your question. All right. And so now I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to stick with the same color. So I'm going to do the same exact thing with our other bear. I'm going to lay the shadow down first along the left side of him with the E37. And then I'm going to dab a little bit at the cuff of the, the jacket. And then a little bit on his legs where the jacket's hanging down. And again, I'll hold it up for you guys. So cute. So, I always question, I'm like, is he wearing pants or are those his legs? I always color it, it like his fur. fur. Yeah. And I always color it like his fur, but then I'm like, oh, should it be pants? Like, because it's it cold. It could be wicked right? cute. <laughs> cute pants, for sure. But I always do it like this, too. That's like when I color the mermaid, too. I sometimes I'm like, is that her belly or is she being super conservative? And is she? I know. I've actually I colored it in both ways. Yeah. I've actually her. colored her in both ways where sometimes she's got a bikini top and sometimes yeah. she's got a one piece, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All good. So I just blended out with the E33. And if you guys haven't taken my online classes, you might not know, but I always color outside of the lines when I'm doing lives because of the angle I have to color at. But I'm just going to fix that later with a white gel pen. Um, 
but now I am going to finish filling in the rest of the bear with one layer of E33 so that it will be a nice, true light version of that marker. And then sometimes, especially when you're coloring something that's a bigger surface, there might be a little bit of an awkward line between the shadow and the light. And so I'm just going to take my marker and just basically flick or make little lines from the dark into the light. And um, that just softens that line a little bit. And then again, we have that really cute little bear. Um, I did his little snout with E53. So just another light brown. And then I think while we have the browns out, we'll go ahead and do the fur on the little guys too. Kind of keep things similar in color so we don't feel like we're running around um, with our markers so much. It's amazing I, how few markers that this time and it has such, it look, everything looks so amazing, but it's really, I mean, this is it. Yeah, it's like yeah. just a few markers. I know. I was like, and honestly, I got a little crazy with the water droplets. I'm not going to lie. Um, so there could be even less markers than what I what I have. <laughs> um, so for little baby bears, we're still going to do the same thing with that E37 and E33. So I'm going to put the shadow on all three of the bears. So in case you don't have the coloring guide in front of you, I'll hold it up so you can see. I think it's totally okay if you're coloring a lot of similar images or maybe a lot of images for one card um, to put the shadow down first on all of them. But then when you get into your blending mode, you want to work um, image by image because you don't want to have the, um, the alcohol evaporate so the paper isn't saturated so that you won't have your blending capabilities as nice. And I'm going to um, answer a couple, a couple of questions, yeah. Jen, while you're blending those in. Well, number one, I'm saying hello to the ladies in Montana that are scrapping down at Anaconda. Hello, Patty and the girls. <laughs> and then we have a couple of questions about what ink pad we're using to stamp the images. They're asking if we clear emboss them um, and what paper we recommend. So that is the ink that we're using. That's the jet black ink. Not only is it alcohol marker friendly, but it's also watercolor friendly because this person is asking about watercolor pencils. So um, you could use this ink on a watercolor paper with your watercolor pencils and it would work great. You can also use it with the alcohol marker. So I love that it's an ink that works so great for so many things and you don't need to clear emboss or anything. You can just stamp and that's it. Awesome. And then the paper that we're using is the Nina Solar White 80 Pound, which is Lawn Fawn's white cardstock. Um, it's the same. So, you know, if you're using that Nina, that works really good with alcohol-based markers. Yes, for sure. And um, and then I had, there was another little question here. What was it? I just yep. lost Oh, yeah, they're asking a little bit about when we do these. So we always do them around new releases. But the spring release was such a big release that we decided to do to two classes. So we did our very special class, which you can find the link to the previous class, the handouts and the video um, on that web page that's listed below. And then we're doing this one here because there's too many fun things in this in this release. I feel like we could do about, about a million create with us. Honestly, yeah, we could do like three more classes. Yeah. Uh, and so we just had to do another one. And then our next one will be after our May release. So our May release is May 19th. And we'll be doing the class um, most likely in early June because we've got Memorial there, Day there at the end of May. So we'll probably be more in early June. And we'll let you guys know that information soon. Yeah, we'll figure out our dates and um, shout it from the rooftops. Did you say when the summer release was going to be, Kelly? I, I was coloring. I'm yes, sorry. It's May 19th, which is actually my 15th wedding anniversary, too. So that's kind uh -huh. of exciting. <laughs> the day after my grandmother's birthday. And my brother's birthday, too. We're, I we, think we, we have this conversation yeah, every year. We do, we do everything in May in my family. Even my yeah. son, Miles, was born in May. So we'll be doing his second birthday on May 28th. So that's exciting. <laughs> 
Shari and I both think that May birthdays are the best birthdays. So we sure are. Um, so here is one little baby bear all blended out. And then I'm moving on to my second little guy. These come together really quickly. Um, may, one, obviously, because they're smaller, but browns are some of the easiest to blend with. So if you're really struggling or want to practice your alcohol-based marker coloring, I recommend just stamping an image. And it could be a heart. Like, it doesn't have to be something that you want to have it be brown. But just stamp an image um, a bunch of times on some uh, some um, alcohol friendly, alcohol marker friendly paper and uh, just practice coloring and don't have a card in mind because then you're going to stress out if it's not coming out, quote unquote, perfect in your eyes. Um, and if something goes awry when you're coloring it, just put a big X through it and move on to the next image that's identical. And that's a really great way to practice. And browns and grays are some of the most forgiving um, at I least mean, in the topic world. Yeah. Warm grays are always really great for me. Like when I just need something to look really great, easy, warm grays. <laughs> yeah. I'm a new sure. I do Oh yeah. Grays. Rebecca's all about the, everyone has their, like their Not combo. Like tonals. I'm sorry. I, I like the, the tonals. tonals. Yes. I the tonals are my go-to. Oh, there's a couple other. I just, people got, with hooked, I just got hooked on the tonals this year. So tonals are, that was my first set of full gray and they weren't like, you couldn't even buy them in the craft stores because it's like the gray nobody uses. And for some reason right. it's the gray that I go to. And someone's yeah, asking if there's really. a, giant, a giant father's day coming in. There is a, a giant happy dad's day coming for the May oh. 19th. And it's very cute. So okay. literally we got all the secrets, all the secrets are coming out. There's lots of secrets. It's so many guys. secrets. I know the main, you guys won't even believe we're already designing Halloween and Christmas, <sighs> which is actually very confusing. I'm not going to lie because it's definitely not Christmas weather right now. <laughs> <laughs> so Pamela, I am using, um, Pamela asked, what am I using to hold these? So I'm using um, Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape. It's just a low tack tape that I use to hold my dies in place when I'm die cutting. And this is actually a trick I learned from Mona Toth, who's on the design team years ago, um, where she shared this on a video. And it was brilliant because when I travel and teach in-person classes, I always have everything pre-stamped and die cut for people. So this is just a great way to have a little bit of a bigger area to hold on to when you're coloring, because in a class like this, we just don't have the time for everybody to sit there and uh, do, you know, die cutting. So um, just some low tech tape, washi tape, post-it tape. Um, and some people ask me if the tape is available on Lawn Fawn. We do have the post-it note tape, which is my favorite. The other thing I do is I'll use like, I have so many, I don't know if you guys have like, I have a hoarded stash of washi tape. And so I'll use the washi tape that I have and it's perfect. So right here, I have like a cute little washi tape and I'm just, I've got my piece out here. So that's another thing too, is a nice way to use up any washi tape that you have. Um, and then the post-it note tape. This is what the old container looked like for it. I have to find the new one. I think we've got one over here. This is what it looks like. Um, and I love this stuff too. This is my personal favorite. I always use to hold down die cuts when I put them through the die cut machine. Perfect. So like I said, I got a little crazy with my water droplets, you guys. <laughs> the girl that usually does two color blending somehow managed to use three colors on little droplets. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I can't explain myself sometimes. Sometimes I get in like my own little world and don't realize what I'm doing. Um, so you can most certainly um, simplify these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I colored the puddle with the three markers. And then I'll kind of quickly explain the droplets. But then we're just going to all just work on all our water. Um, and then, you know, we can answer more questions and not feel like I'm constantly talking about coloring. Um, <laughs> So I'm oh, starting before you start, Jenna. I wanted to mention yeah. just because it's just happening to me. If you're ever struggling with your colors blending together, you may want to see if your marker is a bit dry. So I have a marker that's dry. And so by the time I got to like my smaller bears, it was getting harder to blend. And I always kind of forget that. I'm like, oh, I'm having trouble blending today. And it's like, oh, wait, I just need to refill the marker. So if you're ever having issues blending and you didn't have them before, you may need to refill the, your marker. So that's a good tip. Yeah. I'm, I'm if, yeah. You're, 
if you're struggling, yeah, and if you f feel like your marker is scratchy on the paper or if it's squeaking, definitely needs um, needs some love, needs to be refilled. Um, somebody said the reason why I use three markers is because I'm a mermaid. And yeah, that's probably <laughs> true. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start with B16. And again, I'm going to start with my puddles just because that's such a bigger area to kind of show you guys um, how I'm going to use the three markers. And because it is a little bit of a bigger area, I am going to be a bit generous with my dark marker. So I'm going to hold one up to show you. I'm just working along the bottom. I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way to hold this puddle. I, I thought long and hard about that looking at it. I actually I think, think it about it all the time. time. I think about it all the time. I'm like, wait, do I have it the right way? And it's like, oh, there is no right way. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I'm not alone in that. I'm like, um. But if you're, ever, direction as to how I'm if you're ever stressed out about it and you want to know exactly what Erica intended, you can always look at the picture. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I just, when I'm doing my own thing or even just like my individual lawn fawn blog posts, I'm okay with doing whatever. But if I'm teaching people, I'm like, yeah, I should probably, probably do things the right way. So here's my dark. So this is all B16. And, um, Rebecca, are people still commenting or are they quiet all of a sudden? On my side, they're quiet. Actually, okay. um, Facebook, they're pretty quiet too, from what I see. Okay. I was just making sure something wasn't happening um, in the software that Kelly and I are using. So I guess everybody well, is just really busy yeah. working. Yes. Yeah, Everyone's got their put. They're, they're trying to line up all their water drops in their washi <laughs> tape right now. I know, uh, right? Oh, I love that Sheila's husband is a huge Lawn Fawn fan. And when he saw the sale email, he wanted to ask if she placed the order. I love that. Oh, my goodness. Aww. And someone's asking when mini cubes for colors that we don't have yet. We are working on a mini cube pack, I believe, hopefully, fingers crossed, for fall, winter. Fall, winter. So uh, so we're excited about that because it'll it'll include a lot of the colors that don't have it'll mini cube yet. It'll include everything except one color. Yeah, but I just can't remember which color. But we're well, the new Lucky Clover would be. The oh one. yeah, the new Clover ink won't be in there because it's brand new, but the other ones will. And every time we have four, we'll make a new pack. <laughs> Stephanie has us on split screen. She's shopping on the lawn fawn sale on one and watching us on the other. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> and a lot of people are chiming in that they're busy uh, coloring, which is totally fine. I was just making sure. Um, I saw how many eyeballs are watching us and I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't, um, something wasn't going wrong on our end. All right, so now I'm filling in the rest of the puddle with the very lightest marker, which is the B00. And I guess the reason why I really wanted to have a third blue is because blues are tricky to blend, you guys. It's one of the hardest. And this is a harsher blue versus the teals that I use um, all the time. So it's even harder. So when a color is harder to blend, it is nicer to have um, three colors. And then also I really wanted a good, strong highlight on my on my water and my my puddle so having that really light b00 kind of up in that corner works really nicely so at least i think it does <laughs> and i have to tell you b16 um copic matches mermaid lagoon distress oxide which we're using today perfectly just had to kind of tell you that things that i Things that I come up with back over here. And I wouldn't have thought to use uh, B16, like then with the B02, you know, like I, so it's kind yeah. of fun to use markers like that that aren't totally related. It looks so nice. Yeah. And then like the jump, you know, to go from 16 to two, that's not usually, but it works. Yes. So I am just coloring um, the puddles. And so. If you guys have any questions, you can let us know in the chat, but I see some of you are frantically still stamping, which is totally okay. And yeah. some of you are coloring, which is also okay. Awesome. I've got a couple questions. Someone's asking for a giant thinking of you and we don't have that yet, but I'm, we're writing it. We're literally writing it down right now because I think that's such a good idea. We have a sending big hugs, which is kind of in the, kind of in the thought process of thinking of you, but we definitely need that. So we'll work on that for sure. Um, and it looks like it's snowing in Northern Illinois and it's melting here. <laughs> Let's see. 
Keep your snow, Illinois. Keep your snow. I do not want they, it. They love hearing the answers to their questions in real time. That's what makes this so fun. I only wish we were all crafting in the same room together. And a couple other people are post-it tape fans too. It's my favorite. I don't know. I think I've like, have you ever heard about like the idea of brand loyalty and brands you're loyal to your whole life? I feel like post-its is one of them. We're like, I just, I always love post-its. Like I've just always had that brand of sticky note, you know? So yeah. even our sticky notes are post-its. Yes. Yeah, so the Lawn Fawn sticky notes that have like the cute designs on them, they're actually post-it. I didn't want to make them unless they could be posted because that's how much I love post-its. I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I love it. Someone wrote when we asked if it was working, someone's like, yeah, because we're coloring. Duh. <laughs> I, love, I saw that. I love it. Good. I always just get nervous. I mean, we have hundreds I of people just... watching and all of a sudden the chat wasn't moving. So yeah. I was like, oh. Well, this is our newer software too. Hello, Karen Trelecki. Um, so here are all my puddles, all colored. Oh, those look really pretty, Jen. I got to up my blending game over here. Oh, thanks. Um, so now I am going to do the droplets. And I'm just going to show you one real quick. And then we'll, again, just kind of chit-chat while we're coloring. But um, it's pretty much the same on the trio of droplets and the splash of droplets. I'm just going to do the dark on both of these so you guys can kind of just see. But on the trio of droplets, I just did a little bit of that B16 right at the little base of the droplets, like those little triangles. And then the splash, I did a little bit on the bottom and I went a little bit up the right side. And then I'm just touching the right side of the bigger splash parts. <laughs> It's hard to come up with all these terms when you're. Uh, I know. I had like Google happens. things a lot because I'm like, wait, what's the name yeah. of like the antlers on this critter or yeah. the, you know? <laughs> exactly. And then when I go in with my B02 and I blend this out, which I'm going to do both at once, even though that's kind of breaking my rule that I just told you, but just because I want to show you. Um, when I blend this out, and go out of the lines like I always do. Um, I want to leave something white, just to, even if it's a teeny bit to stick that B00 in. So you can see on those trio of droplets, it's not a lot, but because B00 is so much lighter, it really will make a difference. Like it's, it's worth it. It's like one of those things that it's like, am I crazy? And then you finish and you're like, oh no, that's worth it. Because that B00 will also take a little bit of the B02 color away too. So if you're using alcohol-based markers, the lighter color, it kind of works um, like a bleach pen a little bit on darker colors. And so it will lighten it up as well. So here are two, those two finished. And then I'm just going to go to town and color droplets and we can um, answer questions. Marilyn Chandler just said, hello from Cape Cod. And I feel like I know all the paper crafters on Cape Cod and I don't recognize that name off the top of my head. I am in Osterville, Marilyn. Oh, that's fun. And um, yeah. uh, I just wanted to answer Sheila's question. Sheila, it's a back, it's a background software that they're using so that we can uh, be on Facebook and YouTube at the oh. same time. Oh yeah. So yeah, we're using a special software you guys can't see so that one Jen can kind of edit and have like her hands bigger and then us on the sides. And then also so that we can be on two, uh, two places at once, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we've got a really great question here by Karen and it says, how do you decide what colors will blend best? And I'll answer a little bit and then and I'll let Jenna go into more detail, but honestly, it's like, it's just playing around with it and practicing and also using what you've got. Like I have a lot of markers now, but I mo for a long time only had a few and I learned how to blend random colors together. I had bought a, a bunch at a garage sale. So I had like all these random colors and, uh, and that helped me kind of like learn what might blend together that you may not think. So a lot of that's practice or doing a class like this where you can see someone else that's found a cool color combo. You can also do some Googling as well. Like good color combos for water, Copic, and then see what pops up. And then I'll let Jen kind of give her insights to that too. Yeah. So I was just going to say, um, don't always 
feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. I think when it comes to Copic coloring for me personally, I enjoy coloring. I find it very relaxing, but I don't always switch it up very much. Like I remember when we were doing a ton of in-person trade shows, I design a lot of the classes that we teach for Lawn Fawn. And so I would design them, but Rebecca would be on the West Coast, like kidding and getting ready. And she's like, Jen, you do know I own all the Copics, right? You can use any color because I would just stick to the same colors all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but this is just what I do. So don't always feel like you have to color it different every single time. If you found a water combo that you like, um, just use it. Like, don't, don't put that pressure on yourself. And then when you're in the mood, like Kelly said, experiment and play. Um, I will just say like on that Copic 101 blog post I have on my site, I share my favorite two color combos for the whole rainbow. I think that's a really great just starting off point. And then I think I put a link on the handout that you guys can download a free Copic coloring printable on my website. So if you do find a color combo that you love, you could stamp it and color it on this Copic coloring chart that I have. And then that way you'll remember it. You can kind of keep it in a binder and you can like refer back to it. So you don't have to be like, what was that again? And you're like struggling to remember. So, um, but I also don't have very many Copics. For the longest time, I only had like 70. Um, I think I'm up to like 120 ish right now, but I still honestly only use like 50 to 60. I really do. And we've got uh, someone here. This is a great idea. I think we should also write down is to have some get well and sympathy uh, sentiments that are magic that. messages, that. which I love that I so like much. Oh my oh, gosh. Friend, it's funny because we were, somebody wrote into um, our email here wanting a workout set. And I was like, oh, that could be so fun. I wrote, Erica said it could be yoga too. Cause Erica loves yoga. So yeah. I wrote down, yeah. <laughs> and somebody asked for a motorcycle. So all your ideas are getting written down. Oh, I, I love, I love a motorcycle. Is popping for their birthday on the sale today. That's awesome. That would be, um, a motorcycle would be good. I can make a card for my dad, Jimbo. Oh, Karen says she loves her post-its. Hi, Karen. Karen is one of our amazing reps here. Um, and uh, looks like someone uses their Cricut mat to hold down the stamp pieces while they color, which oh, is yeah. a really great idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah and and someone some, else people in my, some people in my classes have been um, die cutting all the images for the class. Like, you know, you cut your sheet to fit through your whatever die cut machine you're using. And then they place their pieces back into place and just put like press and seal on the back. So they're still holding just a whole sheet. And so that works as well. A lot of people are watching at work. Hello. <laughs> we won't tell on you. <laughs> Which um, oh, I was just gonna chime in real, I was just gonna chime in real quick just cause I keep mentioning it. But just so you guys know, a lot of the times um, I have a, another online class using similar supplies that we use in these Create With Us classes um, where you'll get different coloring guides, we'll make different cards, different tips and tricks. Um, and so my Rain or Shine class is coming up on April 13th, I think. I and do it's, this every time. Um, and it's April 16th. And Jen's April classes are so fun. I'm sure people in the comments that have attended can let you guys know, but they are amazing. It's like uh, this on steroids, right, Jen? Like it's, yeah. And that's the cards are so cute. I've seen them. They are adorable. It's, um, it's an all day class. And what's fun about it and what I love as a teacher is I'm seeing people comment about how they're finding, you know, their card making is improving, they're feeling better about it, their coloring is improving, and they're using their supplies more. I love to hear that. I love it, love it. Um, so it makes me so happy. And I just love seeing what everybody creates. I also love a lot of people are having some fun uh, suggestions. I love the golfing my suggestion just because my, my Mike, my husband is a big golfer. So, oh my gosh, Mike would be all over that. Oh yeah. And also someone wants a craft room set and I think Barb's going to be super happy on May 19th. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. secret <laughs> secret. It's very well, cute. If anybody's ever curious, don't ever give Kelly your secrets. Cause she yeah. keep 
<laughs> yeah. I also, I can't, I can't lie. There was an April fool's joke here and I couldn't be in on it because I, I <laughs> that's to keep it away. Well, yeah. I messed that, it up because I, I can't, I can't lie. And yeah. also if you're a lawn fawn fan and you just want to know about future lawn fawn things, then you should always chime in to our create with us. Oh, yeah. because... Somebody said they love tiny friends and we have a very cute tiny friend set coming out in May too. I actually think it's going to make people really happy because I know yes. I've seen this it's request a lot. Yes. And people email in, they write in all the time yeah. about this request. Um, and so I think you guys are going to really like it. It's really, the tiny friends are so fun. I have to tell you that Miles, my son, he's almost two and he, well, he loves stickers. So we just like take die cut images and we put tape runner on the back and stick it to him. And he calls them his babies. And Aww. so he has like all these tiny friends. He's like, babies, babies, babies. And he sticks them to the wall, like on his changing table in his room. And so he oh has all gosh. his um, And so tiny friends are his babies. <laughs> oh my gosh. So so sweet. Cute. It's adorable. He calls any character that any like human in a book that isn't like a critter, any, any character is a baby. Yeah. So Aww. like if anyone knows the runaway bunny, there's like this circus scene and he's like, baby, 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 baby. And then he goes, horse, baby, 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 baby. <laughs> And the bunny um, babies too. It's very cute. That is so <laughs> cute. So I didn't want you guys to lose all these individual raindrops. So for the class prep, I had just had you keep them on a square of cardstock and we'll die cut them in class now. But for these droplets, I put my dark again at the point. Um, but essentially it's at the top, not the bottom. So I'll just do my dark with the B16 and just show you guys what that looks like. So just like my nails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the um, the dye for these raindrops are really fun because you could stamp them on their own and like fill up an entire background with them or the dye will cut out little individual raindrops for you that you can then add wherever you would like to the card. So I like when dyes do that because it's kind of like you can use the stamp in two different ways. Yeah, I love it too. Ooh, man, I still got some water droplets to color. I was going to say, you were answering a lot of questions, yeah. but um, if you are crafting along with us, let me know in the chat how you're doing with your water. Mm -hmm. um, I know I color a little fast, so um, we definitely can wait a, a bit. Yeah, and I'm going to answer a couple questions too here. Uh, so someone says they're new to this and they've Something never used Coke. Went... Are you? Oh, are we not live anymore? Yeah, um, okay. It's live on my end. Okay. I've got you frozen on full on everything and I have you that might be I'm gonna that's your computer and then I'm gonna shut um, it down. Okay. Um so uh, someone's asking that they're new to Copic markers, they're asking for a brand. So Copic marker is a a brand of alcohol markers, but there's other brands of alcohol markers too. There's a uh, Spectra Noir. There's um, those Arteza markers. I think there's, I think Alton, you might have there's, some alcohol yeah, markers. Yeah, there's o o Oahu. O yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of, a lot of them. So if you Google's alcohol markers, there's a lot of different kinds. These ones are kind of like the ones that are the most well known out of all of them. And then I would think the second most well known is Spectra Noir. And those are really popular in Europe. Um, and I feel like Copic markers tend to be popular. These come from Japan. So, but they're all fun. And the cool thing is, is they all do the blending like this. So even if you got the, say a different brand, you can still look at this coloring guide and say, okay, I need dark blue, medium blue, light blue, and use whatever blues you have. Cause the coloring guide is going to work with any alcohol marker or watercolor or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so here, um, we, oh, someone loves the gingham paper. I love it too so much. Uh, and lots of fun little citizen, uh, th th fun themes and ideas people are putting in here for different stamps, which are so awesome. And people saying how much they love your classes, Jen. I mean, I know oh, they've also yeah. linked, um, both Shari and Rebecca have been linking to Jen's classes in the comments. But if you need the link again, let us know. Um, and just like um, our Create With Us is, if you cannot attend the class live, um, you can attend the class whenever it works for you, anytime after the class date. So it's um, always fun to do it live, but sometimes people will do it in little chunks in the evenings. Or again, that's the beauty of these online classes is you can make them really work for you guys. Someone's asking if Lampon has a ballerina, and I don't think we have one. No, no we've really? talked about that. Yeah, we've talked about it, but we need to because that would be so cute. 
Oh my gosh, everyone. Oh, people are okay. People are excited for Halloween Christmas. I'm glad because we're already on yeah. that now. And it's so fun to see your requests. And then I'm like, oh wait, we've got to focus on Halloween and Christmas. <laughs> um, and someone's asking if we ever would consider a monthly box. We haven't considered that yet, but we are working on on something. It's not monthly, but something that people have been asking for that's kind of related. So I'm excited about that. But um, we'll definitely let you guys know if we uh, can ever get something monthly on board. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to color my clouds next. And I just wanted to show you kind of a fun trick as well with alcohol-based markers is you can layer colors that maybe aren't in the same color family. So um, if you're just starting out building your collection, um, buy a gray because you can always have a gray as your shadow and color over it with pink or red or green, whatever, and that will help build a shadow. But in this case, um, for the rain cloud, I wanted it to have a hint of blue. So I'm doing the right hand side with the T0, which is a really light gray. And then I'm just tracing right over the T0 with B00. Because I kind of wanted it to be like, honestly, those of you that know me know I love distress. I wanted it to be speckled egg. So that's what I made with T0 and B00. And that's when I had very few markers. That's what I did. I colored over like red with a light brown to make a brick colored red or things like that. So you can really get a lot of, of things out of there. Um, oh, someone else makes their their uh, their niece stickers from Lon Von Sets too. So I love that. <laughs> oh, C Callie colored ahead of time so she wouldn't be sweating bullets. <laughs> oh, cheater. No, I'm just kidding. That would be me. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm with you, Callie. Oh, and someone's going to shop at a local craft store tomorrow for lawn fun. I love that. <laughs> and I saw Michelle is in the comments. Michelle works at Scrappy Chic in um, Michigan. And um, Scrappy Chic in Michigan and the Paper Crafters Workshop in Canada sometimes make kits for my online classes. So if you yes, sign up- I was actually just going to tell you because someone was asking if there was a kit. So I wanted you to explain how there's some oh, stories. Yeah. yeah. So um, I knew I would not have time to do all the kitting and stuff and teaching and everything, designing while I've been doing these online classes from home. Um, and Scrappy Chic is a store in Michigan that I've taught at before. And the Paper Crafters Workshop is our friends as well. I haven't been able to teach there yet, but she was on my list. They both approached me about doing kits and shipping them. So there's a Canadian store shipping, you know, Canadian and then a U.S. store. And so when I announce my online classes, they have a certain amount of kits that they're making and, um, and they sell them. So just to give you guys an idea, my online classes are only $20. And I believe, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure Scrappy Chic sells their kits for $15 to $20. I know Michelle was in the comments and maybe she could chime in. Um, I think she's on Facebook. And if I see her comment, I will say it. So the people on YouTube. So that's a really fun way too, that if you want to try out the supplies or try out the stamp set, I will warn you though, a lot of people end up being uh, enabled and end up buying all the stamp sets after class. Um, but yeah, so Michelle said that's correct. The kits are usually $15 to $20. It depends on if there's an interactive card or how hard the kitting process is for them, but it's still super affordable. And then for, um, I, you know, one thing we've never done on our site, and I'm going to start doing that now, is we can create um, a little collection on our site, too, that just shows all the products that we're going to have in each class. And so we'll start doing that oh, as well. Awesome. So I think it'll be nice. You can then click to that collection, just see all the images of everything. And I think that's always a nice thing, too. So we'll start doing that and then put those together for the different classes. Perfect. Perfect. Um, um, oh, I blocked somebody. Yeah, you're going to have to just, um, I got it. Okay, sorry, I don't know how to do that. That's okay. It's You hit the three little dots, I think, but I, um, I got it. I think I got them. Yeah. Okay, sorry, thank you. That's so okay. This is, this is, it's our wild and crazy Friday night, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was there someone wild yeah. and crazy? Oh, boy. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, That's boy. so great for us. Oh, boy. Um, so oh, no, <laughs> I accidentally blocked Michelle Lee, and I actually know her. Can we unblock her? I can't, I don't see it. Um, Rebecca, are you on YouTube? I'm on YouTube, but I don't see her either. 
can you maybe look in the back seat, back side of the settings? Um, she takes all my classes. I think I accidentally, when the I'm, I'm chat was scrolling. And then while we're doing that, I'll, um, someone's saying yeah. that their, their daughter's turning, their birthday is on May 19th. And she actually had a lawn fawn birthday where she attended one of your classes at Scrap Mania and she's been hooked ever since. So it's going to be oh, cool yes. if the release is on her birthday. Um, there's I some people that, that have been using the Ohuhu markers and then now Spectro Noir. Um, and um, someone's hoping for various hats to fit the critters. We do have our original hats off to you um, set. And, um, and we do have a little... When our little special surprise gift with purchase has some little hats in it for May. So, so you'll have to check that out for sure. Um, I love these. We're like all of these things you guys are requesting. These are so amazing. Um, if someone's excited for dogs, there is something very cute with dogs and a lot of other critters in this next release. It's actually adorable. Yeah. All right. And, and M Michelle Lee, she does. I don't know if because when I got kicked out, she was part of it. I can't. Oh, she's on Facebook. That's why. She was uh, blocked on Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Oh. Um, so maybe Shari can look. <laughs> I see Shari. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that 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 drama there, guys. We got. I to... will. Um, I will email Michelle Lee. Oh my I'm gosh. Gonna I'm gonna write a note. All right, and that's what you um, as we're doing that, there's a really great question that we can answer as, as Rebecca's working on that. And we're starting to work on some more coloring um, that you can kind of answer as you start doing things, Jen, is someone's graduating for her senior year and any ideas for a card for that, oh, for a graduation yeah. card? Well, we, we have um, hats off to you. And I think there's a grad cap in that. So you can throw that grad cap on any critter. And then don't we have um, the, the border of- Yeah, Simply Celebrate, there's also one. We also yeah. have a very cute giant hooray die that's coming out in May. And I think that is adorable for a graduation card because it's just right. super cute. So I think you guys are gonna like that too. And I think for me, shaker cards for graduation always. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And what you can do is you could, let's say the school's colors are blue and yellow, then you could get, or blue and gray or whatever it might be. You could get blue and gray sequins and have them in the shaker. So it's the colors of her school, which I think is really fun to personalize that way. Um, thank you, Shari, for unbanning Michelle Lee. Oh, yeah, I was messaging her. And we truly apologize, Michelle. I was sending her I a message. Too. Again, I feel bad, but I I at least know her from my classes, so um, I will at least be able to say oh, sorry. Gosh. Yeah, I, the chat was scrolling so fast, and I was trying to get rid of the bad comments. We had a bad spam. Yeah. Um. Okay, <laughs> Jen Banshee. Wait for an interesting uh, Friday night. Yeah, right. So I am going to start to color the um, raincoats. And this is actually a color combo I learned from Lawn Fawn because I did not own these pinks until I started designing the classes for them at trade shows. Um, but it's a really pretty um, pink combo. And you definitely could get away with just using one or the other. What I'm doing is with the adult bears, I'm doing the darker two, the R85. Sorry, it's out of focus the R85 and the R83. And then the lighter bears, I'm using the R83 and the R81, just to kind of switch it up subtly. So they kind of look a little um, different. So really, really fun. But I will start with the big bears. And when I think about the shadow for this one, um, what you just want to stay away from doing is outlining or inlining the whole image. So I'm doing a little bit under his armpits, his under his arms, you know, and then I'm going down the seam of his coat a little bit along the bottom. And remember when you're doing your shadow, you only need a little bit, you don't need to make it really thick. And then I am coloring his pockets. Um, so here is, oh, let me just do his boots. And then his boots, I'm just concentrating the shadow on the inner side of his body. So the right side and the left side. So you can see there. Sorry, Rebecca's trying to get Daphne and Mo, my dogs, to, to, to go. Oh, when I looked down, I thought Mike had left already. I thought, oh my gosh, they stayed in the craft room and didn't go home for dinner. Oh. 
so uh, funny. So, every, so you guys know Miles, my son, and my two dogs, Daphne and Mo, come to work every day with us. So it's a it's an office filled with kids and dogs. And um, and uh, yeah, and so, and they have little beds here in the craft room on the floor and they hang out with Rebecca and I. And all of a sudden we thought they had been stowaways and stayed up. <laughs> So I just saw June's comment and she says that she would love a set to something to do with detectives. She really loves forensics. Um, so June, oh, I just have yeah. to say you have to check out my true crime card that I recently posted on my site. Uh, Lawn Fanatics, the challenge blog for Lawn Fawn just had my most favorite challenge. It's when we make cards oh, pertaining to TV, movie, music, books, and so many awesome ideas that all of you guys created. Um, and the card that I made for that was um, a true crime. And I made my own like crime mm -hmm. tape everything it was it's really cute and if you guys have never checked out either the lawn fanatic challenge or seen the movie i always call it the movie challenge but it's movie tv books or music you have to check it out it, it it'll literally blow your mind when you see the cards that everybody makes it is so cool to go see everyone's card and it's just a really fun way to get excited and if you've ever thought oh, i want to learn how to like combine my supplies or do something special it's a really cool way to do that. So if you had a movie in mind that you love, you would have to shop through your stamp sets to find images that would work to create that. For example, the true crime, like she's got to find maybe little houses and cars and um, some alphabets and all these different things to combine to create the scene. I so, even had a murder weapon on my card. Yes, I know. That's the that's the uh, pumpkin patch, right? Yep. Uh, you're the, yeah, the uh, We always joked because it was a joke. There's a, yeah, there's a little knife because the squirrels are carving pumpkins, but we called him murder squirrel from the <laughs> beginning. So, so I think that's, uh, it works for your card. <laughs> there's a lot of people uh, talking about different dog types and somebody was mentioning dash hounds, which we do have dash hounds. We so do. So maybe you can link yeah, to I some, like the dash, some hounds. dash hounds. Yeah. And Cause we have really are, cute dash yeah, hounds. People are asking for other dog bath because listen, I've been begging for Aussies since I worked here and I still haven't gotten American girls. We kind of do these like, like there's there's definitely like a sheep but inu looking yes. dog in the in the thing that's coming they're kind of like um you know and they could kind of be different kinds yeah. of dogs depending on how you color them in erica has a dog type that she likes to draw and they're adorable and i love they're fun to color which is my thing with them but i am going to so, link the dash hounds so one thing i just wanted to mention real quick you guys while you're coloring your big bears um color right over those buttons we're gonna glossy those up with a black glaze pen or if you don't have a black glaze pen you can just use a black marker to make them black so don't stress yourself out about coloring around the buttons um and then i wanted his pockets really dark so I just kept dabbing the R85 continuously over it, um, over and over and over, and that will get a darker version, um, just to give you guys some tips. And then um, I love hearing everyone's uh, different dog types. I hope you guys, there's multiple dog types and what what the thing that's coming out in May. Yes. So I think you guys are gonna really like it. There are a lot of different dogs. And there's other critters as well. So it's it's very, very cute. Oh my gosh, someone says that Mary Poppins card. Oh my goodness. And I saw the Mary Poppins card oh, in the oh my set. God. Yeah, Peg it's made that. So it's so good. Oh my gosh. Go I missed that one. Yeah, you guys have to Peg, check it out. Um, and Peg if you have link this link to that Lawn Fanatics challenge so people can find it. And then also, well, two things. Peg helps me out with my um get cracking on Christmas series. So I messaged her on Instagram right away. I was like, oh my gosh, I love Mary Poppins. And she's like, it's one of my favorites too. She used this guy to make him Mary Poppins. So um, and what I would also say is if you're on Instagram, if you look at the Lawn Fanatics challenge, uh, sorry, Lawn Fanatics hashtag, um, you'll have to scroll a little bit because we have moved on to a new challenge now, but just scroll a little bit and you'll start to see. I mean, Somebody did I Love Lucy, where they're stuffing the chocolates in their shirt oh, um, in the factory. Somebody did Beauty and the Beast. I, I mean, mind-blowing, mind-blowing. And Shari recently did a little mermaid card that's on our YouTube channel. Maybe you guys can link to too. And it's so cute. So if you want to oh, do some little mermaid one movie, uh, Amazing. movie things. And someone says that they have a mutt, so they never seen anything like her. I also, my Daphne is a mystery mutt, like poodle mix and uh and so the, a lot of these dogs you can turn them into you know any kind of dog all right bye guys
Mike's taking off with uh, Miles and the girls. So, <laughs> bye boys, bye girls. <laughs> um, yeah, you can I'm always make the dogs you. look oh. like yours, just like I do with all the cat stamps. Yes. I make them look <laughs> like you know my kitties. So, and someone's asking what color the large bears are, and if you haven't seen it yet, and you can see the link below, um, and then again. we're gonna link it as well in the comments. We have these amazing handouts for this class that actually not only have this gorgeous guy, but have all the colors that we've used as well. So that's really, really helpful. Um, you can even see on the front page of the coloring guide, it has all the markers listed. So that'll help you find those. And the bears were E37, E33, which is Jen's magic favorite combo. I just have literally been using it for 15 years. So it's like, it's like a good go-to brown combo. And if people want some more music critters, I agree. That'd be fun to do some more instruments. You can tell what instruments I play based off of uh, Erica, Mike, and I play based off of what was included yeah. in the in the set. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to my baby bears. Um, and just as a reminder, for those guys, I'm going to use the two of uh, the lighter version of the pink. So the R83 and the R81. Um, and I, their rain boots are going to be gray. So I'm doing just their jackets, just so you guys know. And I'll lay the shadow down and bring it up to the screen so you guys can see if you don't have the coloring guide. And then we can um, just go back to coloring and chatting. It's amazing how going over the pockets with the darkest marker again, what a difference it makes. Yeah, and you could do it like a couple times and you'll just see it keep getting more and more bold, which I love. And again, just, yeah. you know, just with two markers, you don't have to have a lot. Here Somebody is asked me if we have um, large sketches. That would be the challenge. Yeah, the Lawn Fanatics Challenge, We they're different. So there'll be color ones, sketch ones, like themes, like the movies. Um, and so we do have sketches in there. Jen, I don't know if you can speak a little bit more on how to find the older challenges. Yeah, like so we do um, sketches. We do inspiration boards. We do themes. Um, and the challenge is, runs two weeks at a time. So if a month has five weeks in a weird way, then one challenge will run for three weeks. So we only do two challenges a month. And um, you can go to lawnfanatics.com and you'll see the current challenge, but then you can scroll through and see all the other challenges. And then um, even if you don't want to enter the challenge, I think it's a great starting off point when you're just kind of not sure what you want to create. Maybe you just need a starting off point. Um, like th this challenge is an inspiration board where there's some pictures, there's some color swatches, and you can choose whatever you want that kind of just spurs your creativity. <coughs> Excuse me. If you do want to enter the challenge, um, you just enter your link into the challenge. And um, we choose by random number generator. And you can win a $50 gift certificate to Lawn Fawn, which is awesome. Um, but it's not, you know, like a popularity contest or anything. We choose it by random number generator. Um, Nancy does that. And then, but we do feature some cards every challenge as well. Um, and so it's just really fun. And again, if if you're looking for more inspiration, Lawn Fawn's design team is amazing, but then the Lawn Fanatics design team is amazing it's as well. So it's just God. even yeah. more inspiration. And it's too, it's also a community, right? Because it's not, yep. we say challenge, but I mean, really, it's more about a, a jumpstart for creativity. And so, yeah. for example, you could go back to an older challenge and just and just do it you don't have to necessarily enter it just to look for that that right. inspiration, which i think is a really cool way it's almost like a little resource of just ideas because sometimes you just need you know just a little idea to kind of spark something you know for that sure. just happened today we were creating um for our for our catalog for all of our amazing stores wholesale stores that work with us and uh, we needed a card from one of the new stencils and it was like well i know i need to make this stencil i know i need to make it in 15 minutes. So like it kind of helped me come up with an idea quickly because I had I knew it had to be quick and simple. I knew I had to use one particular product. So it's kind of fun to 
have a little bit of those limitations because that I think almost more focused. Yeah. yeah. Um, someone, Monique mentioned she's been cutting 500 plus flowers from the spring flower backdrop to use for Mother's Day gifts, uh, gifts that the preschoolers are going to make. And that is so sweet. Wow. Goodness. Amazing. And we're going to have to, we have someone kind of infiltrating I, I again. Did, I blocked them again. Okay. I'm so sorry, guys. That there's kind of a spam that keeps infiltrating um, the. It's the on YouTube, YouTube, right? That it's yeah. happening. Yeah. So don't I click, don't click that. Yeah. Um, all right. And someone, I think you may have answered this already, uh, Jen, but someone was asking, um, how to add, how to do a link that she needs an explanation on how to do that. Oh, for the lawn fanatics challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. So it depends where you're posting it, but if you're, if you're posting it on your, you need to post the card publicly somewhere so you can post it on your page, on your Facebook page. Your personal Facebook page can be private, but you do need to make that one photo public. And when you post something, there's like a little globe um, next to the your name or just, I, I'm not visually seeing it very well, but there's a little way to make just that one photo public. Um, and same thing with Instagram. You could post it on your Instagram account, but you just have to make sure that your account is public. Um, once you have it posted, you're going to, click on that photo wherever you posted it, Facebook or Instagram. It's a little bit easier to do this part um, on a computer, but you wanna just grab the unique web address for that one photo. And then that's what you paste into the link up that we have at the end of the challenge blog. Um, if you run into any questions, I know that might sound really jumbled. Um, I'm happy to type out instructions for you. So feel free to send me an email and I'm happy. I've walked people through that before that were new to the challenges and wanted to participate. So I'm happy to help. Yes, of course. And we do um, have some people that link from Flickr. It's like a photo oh, yes. it's a yep. photo storage site. And it's, so if you really don't want to link, for, either you don't have social media or you don't feel comfortable linking from your private social media, that's a very nice way because you can just get a free account and put your one card photo on there and just share from there too. So um, it's just kind of a personal preference thing. Yes. So I've got my pinks colored. Those of you that are coloring along with me, how are we doing? Give me some thumbs up and hearts if you have your pinks colored and we will move on to grays. And, and then there, someone is trying to remember if there's a tiny dog. I, I okay, you linked that I, one? I, okay, because there is a tiny them. dog. Yes, yes. <laughs> I linked both of them. And then somebody is asking if there's an introduction video for skinny stripes. Here. And that's going to be coming. So Inspiration Week is coming starting April 15th. Um, it's We're making tax day more fun. Um, so starting April 15th, we have our final Inspiration Week for this release. And in this Inspiration Week, we're going to be featuring the other products we haven't shown yet. So year 11 and year 12, which are birthday stamps for us, which is exciting since it's Lon Fon's 12th birthday. And, um, and then also the skinny stripes, the tiny gift box goat and llama the outside in strawberry. So a lot of products, a lot of fun stuff. There'll be intro videos, design team samples, and lots of giveaways. So April 15th, make sure to check out the blog and we'll have all of that on there. Somebody's saying that the, one of the best classes in a store that they ever attended was at, well, in a little store in Tustin. So I'm going to say that Stamp Fever. It has that, Stamp we had, Fever. that we had gone to and done a class at. So yes. Yeah. So that is our local store here. We're in South Orange County. Um, and so Stamp Fever is our local store. And I'm so glad, glad that you enjoyed your class there. And we look forward to being able to do oh, events yeah. there again one day because mm -hmm. we miss it. It's been a long time. <laughs> and then somebody's asking for uh, Hawaiian Santa mice. Can we write that for Erica, please? Hawaiian Santa. Yes. <laughs> I know. We do. We <laughs> have. There, there are talks of tropical Christmas because people have been asking for it here for years. Yeah. So we'll see. it hasn't happened yet, but we're talking about it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move on to grays. Um, we talked about tonal grays. So I just kind of, I've had these grays, but I haven't played with them that much until last summer um, when I did my Tropical Vibes class with the Two Can Do It stamp set. And what I like about the tonal grays is that um, they have a little bit more of a cool tone to them than the warm grays, which I also love and use a lot. But I find that they blend a lot easier than the cool grays. I always struggle blending with the cool grays. I just feel they're a bit harsh. Um, 
personally. So I just really love these tonal grays. So we're going to color the umbrellas and we're going to use T6, T4, and T2. I do think it's helpful um, in this case to have at least three grays. It doesn't have to be the tonal grays. Um, although I know I've enabled quite a few of you in my classes because I've been using them so much. I even, I think I even used them on the skunks um, in love letters. But um, so I'm going to start with my T6 marker, which is my darkest of the gray. And I'm going to go down the left side of the umbrella. And then that middle stripe, I'm going to come down from the top. And then I'm going to go down the right side. And then I'm going to go right under the overhang of the umbrella. And I'll bring it up to the camera to show you guys. So you can see here, that's with the T6. And then what I'm going to do is blend that out with the T4. Um, and so this way, we're going to have some really dark, intense stripes. And then our other two stripes, we're going to do with the T4 and the T2 so that we have some lighter stripes. So I'm kind of going in and blending. Again, I just think these blend so quick and easy. Um, if you're using warm grays, this would look super cute as well. And then I'm just doing the underbelly of the umbrella. I'm catching right. up. My pink bears finally did it. I was going to say, um, <laughs> so this is what that will look like. And then with our other two stripes on the umbrella, I'm going to do my shadow with that T4 that we were just using to blend out. Okay, just like that. And then I'll blend that out with the T2. No worries if you guys are joining us late. Um, come join the party, the chat. We have only worked on coloring so far, and then you always can watch the replay too if you want to, you know, start from the beginning. Somebody asked what our process will of coming up with new stamp images or sets are, Kelly. Oh gosh, so that's that's really we we have these really fun Zoom meetings, and we'll all kind of come with ideas, which is awesome. We also love getting requests, like you guys have been giving us today, um, which is so fun because we like to make things that you that you want. So we love hearing things like, "Oh, we want to see this, we want to see that," because we love to create things that you're gonna love and um, and use and make cute things with. So a lot of that is just kind of like brainstorming, like. When, sometimes we have characters that we love, like our bears or our mice, and we're like, ooh, wouldn't it be fun if the mice were or the bears were? And we'll kind of go like that. Um, and so that's a really fun way to kind of come up with ideas is just kind of imagining what would be an adorable card and going from there. Yeah, I'll color through the second bear, um, the umbrella, just slow like I did this last time. So I'm going to start with the T6. And I'm just going down a thin line down the left side, a thin line down the right side. And then that center stripe, I'm coming down from the top. And then I'm just doing a line in that overhang of the umbrella, like on the inside. I'll bring it up to the camera. This is with the T6, the darkest of your grays. Ooh, I agree with Callie, we need some bees. Hmm. If you want bees, you might also be happy in June or July. <laughs> Somewhere around there. When we're doing something a little special and different. And now I'm blending out with the T4 on those dark spots. Uh, Jen, underneath the umbrella, is that all T4 or do you also bring in the T2? Um, all T4. Okay. Well, T6 and T4. I did a line of T6. Yes, and then, yes, yeah, blend it out with, okay. I wanted to make sure I wasn't 
mixing up my markers. We got some horses and definitely some bee puns coming. <laughs> <laughs> Because this umbrella is a bit larger as well, I think it's fun to go back in with your dark marker. So I'm going back in with my T6 and I'm just lightly drawing some lines coming down from the top of the umbrella, just giving it some texture. Um, and I just think that's kind of fun too. It's nice to practice coloring in a larger image. Yeah, for sure. And then the other two stripes are going to be T4 as the shadow coming down from the top, just like so. And then I'm blending it out with the T2. I liked keeping um, the pop of color on these cards, just being the blue and the pink and really not introducing another color. Like that's kind of fun sometimes to just make something gray so you're not having maybe too many colors going on. I wouldn't have thought to make the umbrella gray and it looks so cute. I was just thinking that too. I'm like, I, I never would have done it and I like it. Thanks guys. And now I'm going to do the little rain boots on the little bears. Um, and I did those with the T6 and the T4. I'll lay the shadow down with the T6 and I'll bring it up to the camera to show you. But I'm essentially doing it on the flat side of the boot, doing either an L or a backwards L. Keep it um, somebody wants to know what we do at the company office for Lon Fon's birthday. Anything special or special traditions? For the, you know, we haven't and we really should do. We, we do, should make we get lunch. Oh, we get lunch. We do do lunch, but we should do something fun. Like we always get a certain dessert or something. Ooh. That'd be fun. Oh, we could get Portos. Anyone who lives here, it's a Cuban bakery. It's so <laughs> like, good. Um, I love Portos. Yeah. So we need to come up with like a better. We do. We've done like one year we got Cheesecake Factory cheesecakes. Yeah, We've we done just, different things. We but... always do some sort of little celebration. But not like a tradition. Yeah. So we really should make something. That'd be fun. Which, by the way, I don't know if he's lost yet, but there was a guy on Jeopardy very recently, as in like, if not last night, the night before, who is from um, Rancho Santa Margarita. Wait, really? Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because I've been struggling to watch Jeopardy without Alex Trebek. Mm. I love Jeopardy. Like, oh, Jeopardy. Yeah. yeah. How did you yeah. And stopped? But I haven't watched it because I had all of these saved up episodes because on my DVR, they kept piling up, but I had a baby. So I had had all of these episodes I didn't watch. So I've been watching. I was still watching Trebek episodes until recently. And I, I it's it's hard. I don't know if I want to spill that way, but I have to get back into watching it because it I is honestly, a hard person. I honestly could be okay not watching it, but Chris is obsessed. So <laughs> I sit on the couch and do my evening office work and he watches Jeopardy. So. I get like oh, one question. Oh, Debbie, by the way, answered yes. Portos, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Deb Debbie works here. Love yes, I love I I love Jeopardy so much. It's yeah, like, I it's just music. I just don't retain trivia like that. Every once in a while, I'll answer a question. That's that's me. I like I get I, one, I, and I'm like, I love it. I feel so great that it's, I got a question. It's my happy yeah. place. I, lo I yeah. love it. My brain is full of useless trivia. It needs to get out somewhere. <laughs> Someone says that the Danny and mice were their gateway into Lawn Fawn. And I, I love hearing that because the Danny and mice are some of my favorites. Yay. Oh, and someone else um, loves the yay squirrel. And <laughs> we need to have more squirrels. Uh, yeah, it's I been a while have, since we did squirrels. I love to have more squirrels. <laughs> the umbrella handle, I came down from the umbrella with T4. So like halfway down the handle and then filled in the rest with T2. Somebody had asked. So we are going to start ink blending, you guys. How are we feeling? Are we ready to uh, ink blend? Yeah. I think I've, I've, oh. only, I've, all I have to do is the umbrella handle. So I think if I'm catching up, I'm guessing everyone's. I don't even think I brought the cam cards on camera. <laughs> yeah, we haven't even shown the, well, it's kind of fun. It's a surprise. 
Well, now I am. Now I'm showing it because I was like, oh, they're sitting off here. So we're going to be making this A2 card. Um, you guys had requested that we work with the Liquid Stardust. Um, so we're going to be playing with that tonight. So maybe I will enable some purchases there. Um, and then I can't wait to share these letters with you guys. And then we're going to be making a pivot, a uh, pivot pop-up, a uh, platform pop-up. Um, and this is inspired by Grace, who's on our design team, who came up with the idea of putting a clear circle. I'm pretty sure it was Grace, right, Kelly, who did that first? Grace. When she, okay. she sent me, she texted me a photo and she had done that. I was like, oh my goodness, you are yeah. a genius. It's, she's a genius. I, we never thought of it when we designed the die, and it literally takes the die and lets you do a so whole much new more. level. Oh, yeah, Grace, we love yeah. you. I don't know if you're watching, but you're awesome. Yeah, so we're gonna. That's what we're doing tonight for those of you guys that maybe didn't do the get the handout. Um, but thanks for sticking with us, even though I didn't share them with you. Um, so, but we're going to do some ink blending for this card here. So I have a piece of, um, I like to ink blend on distress white heavy stock, but whatever cardstock you guys like to ink blend on. And this is cut to be, I'm guessing it's four by five and a quarter. But remember you guys, all the measurements, all the details are on that handout. Um, I show you all the pieces and list it all out for you. And it is four by five and a quarter on the handout as well. Thank Jen. you. And then um, I don't know if I told you guys to have one strip or two, but you're just whatever you're ink blending on, you're going to want um, one or two strips um, to die cut your letters after. But we're going to ink blend first. Um, so I figured it'd be easier to ink blend strips of cardstock instead of cut letters. So what we're going to do is I'm using, um, I'm going to actually use Distress Oxides tonight, which I do know Lawn Fawn has on their site. I'm using Hickory Smoke and Mermaid Lagoon. And um, the oxides are going to work really nice when we do a fun water reactive technique with the liquid stardust and the raindrop stencil. And oh my gosh, we're going to have so much fun. I'm getting excited. All right. So what we're going to do first is ink blend the bottom quarter of your panel with hickory smoke. So you figure your cardstock is three panels, pretend we're just going to ink blend that bottom panel with hickory smoke. So do you mean like the bottom third? Yes. Thank okay. you. And then someone, uh, Wendy, I just wanted to answer a question that something uh, that some of the outline was coming off of your rainy day set. Please email us because we'll replace that. Although I think stays on woodwork on there. Um, we would love to replace your stamp set. So if you email us at info at uh, we'll help you out. And if anyone ever has any questions or issues, Jess is incredible. And uh, you can always write in to info and we're always here to help too. Yeah, Jess is awesome. So I still use a um, ink blending foam when I use oxides. I just personally like it. Um, I find blender brushes, sometimes the bristles get a little gunked up, but use whatever you guys like to do for blending. And just so you guys know, my desktop is glass. So whenever you're ink blending, I do recommend working on some sort of non-porous surface. Um, that will make your ink blend a lot smoother and it'll also make it so you're not wasting your ink. Um, so I'm just inking up my ink blending tool. I'm going to start right on my non-porous surface. So remember, I have glass, but you could be on. I'm going to show what I'm using. Just, yeah. I'm using one of these Ranger wash. like silicone mats. And I really like this because I'm able to just, I put it in my sink and wash it. It's nice. Perfect. Um, and so I'm starting right on that, you know, off my paper. And I'm going to bring the tool into the paper. And you wanna be fairly heavy handed. We want a nice dark um, blend, especially when we get into the blue. And I just recommend it for this technique so the technique will really pop. 
And you can see I'm kind of like letting my gray linger a little bit up here, which you can see I had something on my fingertips, but you can kind of see the, the whispery line that I've left. That's good because we will blend um, blue into that. So Jen, to show mine, is yes. that kind of... That oh, that's good? great. Okay. Looks like I... Is that hickory smoke? I know it looks... Ah, but my hickory smoke is kind of crazy. Like it's... <laughs> Yeah, but so, your, yours is just so much darker. I think I need I to know. give my add some love. I don't think it's been used ever. Probably not. It's, it's not a rainbow. Yet. I have it, but it's like not a rainbow color. So yeah. I probably never I used think it. I need to uh I think I need to re-ink mine. <laughs> yeah. I I don't think Kelly's ever used hickory smoke. Probably not. It's, it's funny. I um ordered a couple new distress pads for the class, the lawn phone class I taught at my crop on the cape event. And um they were so juicy and wonderful. I was like, oh, I'm keeping those now. Like I didn't, I put my older ones back in the class supplies and I'm like, I'm keeping the new ink pad. <laughs> All right. I just cleaned off my table surface so I don't have any gray um, left behind. And now I'm going to do a uh, mermaid lagoon. And same way, I'm inking up my tool really nice. And when I'm working on a bigger area like this, especially when I need to get into the center, I start from the side. So I'm just kind of holding my paper in place and I'm bringing the color in from the side. And ink blending will kind of look like a little bit of a hot mess at first. Um, I'm just gonna show you guys, but the more, especially with oxides, when you work with it, it's gonna smooth out. And as the ink dries, it smooths out as well. And how much should the gray and blue overlap? Um, of course you would ask me that, Kelly. <laughs> well, I, I mean, mean, is it like, is it, it like, it doesn't matter. Exactly. I mean, it's like half an inch, but it doesn't okay, matter. So not a teeny, uh, more than a teeny bit. Yeah, but a teeny bit works too. And so when I'm ink blending a panel like this, because I don't want my fingerprints to get into it, I'm grabbing a post-it note <laughs> and um, I'm going to just hold it. Hold, that will, that's what I'll put my fingertips on to hold my paper in place. All my foams are, um, I'm going to switch my foam real quick. And someone was asking if you're using the normal foam or the dome foam. So with the oxides, I have... Trust me, I've tested this because I do a lot of distressing. With the oxides, I don't think it matters. I think the regular flat foam works just as good as the domed foam. Oh, but with, okay. with dye-based inks, like regular distress or even your lawn fawn inks, I find the domed foam, you'll get a really nice smooth blend. Okay, okay. so for, I'm going to chime in here. So for, you use the domed foam on the regular Yes. Oh, I think, yeah, we have to try that. Because I, I have the brushes, but I want to try. I, I think I tried dome with the oxide and was yeah, kind of struggling. Yeah, and we were struggling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. so just in my, like, crafty world over here, if I want to have something really saturated and heavy and bright, I want to use a blend, a, a foam. And so if it's dye, I use dome. And if it's oxide, I mean, you could use a domed, but I get just a fine blend with the flat and I have a lot of flats. So okay. does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I, it's good to know because I was definitely using them differently. So that's. The dome foam is great because it does work great with dye based um, ink. Yeah. So if you used to struggle ink blending and you maybe haven't invested in brushes yet, just pick up a package of domed foam and try again with your handles. I bet you'll be surprised. And ink blending makes a big difference what paper you're working on. You've got to find a paper that works for you because that's a big difference too. And Bristol Smooth with the Distress Inks or Lawn Fawn Inks works oh. really nice to blend. The Oxide, I feel like you can, I just use my normal Nina, but for the for the dye inks, I really like the Bristol Smooth. So you guys can see mine here, and it's looking a little messy right here The at the seam of the two colors. We're going to smooth that out by going back in with um, Hickory Smoke, and that will soften the edge and smooth that out. 
So those of you guys that have seen me kind of span my craft room before, I have a rainbow rug at the slider door that's in my craft room that goes out to our back porch. And it's really an outdoor rug, like one of those really hard bristly rugs, but it's a rainbow and I like it and we needed a rug there. So, but anyways, um, Jack, one of my kitties, he loves laying on it. And to me, I, I just feel like it must hurt. Like it's all prickly. He's hanging out with us tonight. He usually leaves when I'm talking to you guys, but. He's hanging. Yep. So oh, I'm just going. had to be forced out of here. <laughs> they were like, there's no baby in here. I just want to stay. So I'm just going back over the seam with the hickory smoke. And you guys will see how much that smoothed it out. It also will smooth out much more as the ink dries. Okay. And I did just see somebody um, commented, Heather asked on Facebook, I was told not to mix distress ink with the oxides as far as using the same brush or foam. Do you agree? I would agree because of the formula of the ink. Um, you could go from dye to oxide, but don't go from oxide to dye. All right, while we're ink blending, we're going to, um, I don't know why I cut two strips. We probably don't need two strips, but I don't remember in the instructions if I said two or one, but we're going to ink blend um, this with Mermaid Lagoon because we're going to then die cut out the letters for splash. And be, you know, don't worry if it looks a little messy because once you die cut the letters out of it, and when we add all the fun that we're going to add to our letters, they're going to look cute no matter what. You could definitely use cardstock instead, but I just wanted it to coordinate really well with my card. And that's the beauty of ink blending is you always have all those ways of coordinating your paper. Looks so pretty. I love the like, I love the variations where it's like not perfect, you know? Yeah, that's actually cool. It makes it look special. Yep. Oh, someone else has a cat named Jack. Aw. I love that. I always love hearing people's pets' names. They're always so fun. My three kitties are all like human names. Harley, Gus, and Jack. Oh, yeah, huh. I guess I have one human name and then... And then Mo, who's really Mojito. My mom named her. <laughs> but it's really hard to say Mojito all the time, so we call her Mo. I can't she, Mo. Her she, is a, she, she is a Mo. Did you hear that? While we're um, ink blending, you guys, I'm going to have us ink blend two more things um, out of your kit for this card. I'm going to have you take out all your little bow pieces. Um, so... We're going to just dust the edges with a little bit of ink. In this case, I'm actually going to use Lawn Fawn Hippo ink because I want it to be a really soft edge. I feel like the Distress Oxide is going to kind of put a little bit more of a harsher ink on it. So any dye-based gray ink will work. You could use Hickory Smoke regular Distress if you wanted. Sorry for the laughter. I'm laughing at Rebecca because she what just went over to Amanda's desk, who's not here, and stole her candy. I actually bought this for first the candy I ate the last time. Oh, are you serious? Okay, so now she's stealing the candy that she replaced the other candy of Amanda's that she ate all of. Already. Well, I guess she'll be replacing more candy. I'll be replacing them again. What candy are you eating? Look what I have left on my desk. She's eating the Trader Joe's Cine Dragons. Oh, and yeah. I have um, dark chocolate Ooh. chips. Always. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Good hearts are good. Those are on her desk too. I could have taken those. She's got. A, she's got she a has a candy stash. She's got. She even has Fun Dip. Do you guys remember Fun Dip? I didn't even know they still made it. Oh my gosh, loved Fun Dip. My parents would never let me get it though. I think that's why I love candy so much now is because I wasn't, I was deprived of it as a child. You just want, you just need If my dad's watching, I hope he's hearing this. <laughs> and then he'll go, I don't remember that. And I'll be like, yeah, dad. 
So I'm just dusting the edges of these, you guys. And I love to do this with pattern paper. I think we've done it with the Spiffy Speckles paper before, too. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it really gives it so much dimension. Um, so I just love uh, someone wrote, I have a husband named Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know that um, it looks like Shari answered the question, but it's a good question of what's the difference between distress ink and distress oxide, maybe uh, while you're cleaning up, Jen. Yeah, so Distress Ink is a water-based dye ink. It's water reactive, so it will react a little bit different than other water-based dye inks, and it's translucent. And Distress Oxides are pigment-based. They're a pigment dye fusion, actually, um, but they're very opaque. So hopefully that will help. And then the last thing, I'm going to put all my little bow pieces back in my bag because I just know I'm going to lose them. But while we're ink blending, I would love if we could get out our pink bow pieces for the platform pop-up. And we're going to just dust those with a little pink ink. And in my case, I use Lawn Fawn Guava, but you guys can use whatever you would like. Look at my blue finger. I love it. <laughs> oh, a lot of people. I'm loving hearing people's Ooh, different dog somebody names. Somebody's got a basset named Murphy. My Aussie is named Murphy. Aww. And my other mutt is named Bodie. So I've got, yeah. <laughs> We've got Jack, Cody, Ellie, uh, Casey, Finnegan, Elliot, Tori, Ollie. These are all uh, dog and cat names. So cute. Uh, someone did just ask, what pieces did you use the hippo on? And it's the bow, but the one from the splash card, not the platform pop-up. The gray bow pieces. And Ooh, now I'm Melissa just- Melissa has Ghirardelli dark chocolate sea salt caramel squares. So she just won the candy game. Yeah, Ooh. we have those, but they don't last very long. No, yet. we buy them for- photo samples <laughs> we're like oh we're gonna make a project with these candies but we just eat them all yeah but that's a fun little lawn fawn tip as we're ink blending here or not tip a little funny little story so we do a, we have to photograph things especially for we do a lot with our wholesale stores before you guys ever even get to see it um and we need to have a lot of photographs well there's a lot of specialty candies that you, it's hard to find throughout the year, like those red dove hearts or peeps or conversation hearts or all these, you know, fun Especially little. Especially when you're doing it because yeah. like it's too yeah. early. So Lawn Fawn has a stash of terribly expired candy that we use <laughs> in all of our photos. It's in a drawer right down there. Uh, and Jacqueline, who just started working here, she found the drawer. She's like, ooh, candy, bro. Don't <laughs> eat that. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> I say it's not acceptable anymore. That is anymore. unacceptable candy at this point. It is, it is like those peeps are... You could oh, like they're, they're, they're rock, rock solid. You yeah. could you could you know, throw throw them through a window at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. All right, so I'm just dusting the edges of all those pink pieces with a little bit of guava, just getting all that ink blending out of the way. And now I'm gonna put all these little pieces back in the bag so we don't lose them. Oh, and so I love it. all of these uh, um, different dog and cat names. But so someone has dogs named after scientists, Tesla and Jacques, and it's spelled like the way you spell Jack's name. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because, um, well, Mr. Harley Kitten Shirkus, I named him. But Gus, our middle kitty, came with the name Gus. And I love Cinderella. So I just started calling him Gus Gus without even realizing I was doing it. And then when we adopted Jack, I knew I wanted like another short boy name, but I just didn't know what. And we kind of came up with Jacques, the other mouse in Cinderella. And now it's just J-A-C for short. So there's a couple questions here. I wanted to um, just go over here. And I wish I could read all of these pup names because yeah, they're so cute. Oh my gosh. Great. You guys have to go through the comments because they are adorable. Um, and um and oh, oh well, number one, someone says peeps never expire. Uh, I can assure do. you that they do. It, it, we have some that are. I, I, I will I'll eat them up to a year. Some of that candy was well past a year that I was willing to eat it. And I'm not willing. I think they're probably anymore. like four or five years yeah, old I'm not at this, to this point. Anymore. Yeah. And uh, and then someone's asking that they were talking about the previous blending tool versus this one. And I think there might have been a bit of confusion between the dome versus not. 
talk that we had. I think you used the same blending tools the whole time, but we were talking about different uh, different types of. Yes. So um, let me just show you guys. Okay, I'm gonna pull them out because. Um, so these are the ink blending tools that, you know, Ranger has had for a hundred years. And um, we've always used this foam, the flat foam. And people really struggled with ink blending with them and getting a smooth blend, especially before oxides came into the world. And then oxides came into the world and because of their pigment properties, ink blending with them is much easier. And I think that's why people tend to use oxides more. Although I love regular distress more because the colors are more vibrant and vivid personally. But then um, I think last year um, Ranger came out with the domed foam and I know other companies have domed foam as well. And so I'll use domed foam for dye inks or regular distress ink. And I don't care what foam I use for oxides. And then I also use blender brushes when I want like a softer inking application. This will give you a really um, intense ink usually. Hopefully that for clears me, out. I have, I have a bit of it like a twitchy hand from some nerve damage. I like the brushes. So if anyone has kind of like maybe arthritis or something like that, I like the brushes because I feel like I would sometimes like make mistakes with the 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 foam. So if you feel like you're struggling and maybe you have arthritis or like me, like you have some damage in your hand, I would try the blender brushes because they really do um, help a lot. At least they've helped me a lot there. I also yeah. have a very heavy hand and I prefer the brushes just yeah. because that's uh, with the brushes. My heavy hand isn't as heavy. Yeah. I think because sometimes mine's heavy and sometimes it's light because of the twitch. I like that. Now, Jen, could I ask before you talk about the liquid stardust, we're going to, you want to have the stencil not gonna, over the, uh, yep. right? Yep, I'm going to okay. talk about that. So okay. we're going to be using our Liquid Stardust next. So if you do not own Liquid Stardust, you're going to want to get it after tonight. But what you can do is you can still do the technique we're about to do with water only. Okay. Um, but you, the Liquid Stardust is going to give us shimmery raindrops instead of just water reacted raindrops. So, but what I did is I'm using the Wendy Vecchi station, which we've used in almost every create with us, I think, because I love it so much um, to hold your stencils down. And what I'm going to do is you can use a paper towel, but I'm actually going to use a clean piece of blending foam on a handle. Um, but what I did is I put my raindrop stencil, this is the Lawn Fawn raindrop stencil, and you just want to, um, you can put some of the rain going into the overlapped part of our ink, but most of the gray, we don't want the raindrops. Um, we're just putting raindrops in the sky. So that's why I have positioned my stencil without covering the bottom, okay? And uh, I, there's some good tips here that so, some people don't have the liquid stardust, so they're going to use the fairy dust stencil paste instead. And that's Perfect. a great idea. All right. So what I'm going to do is I have my liquid stardust. And this um, stuff is really, um, it's very saturated. So you only need a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. This is actually, I, I use it quite a bit. And this is actually my original bottle from when it came out. Um, because you only need a little bit. Um, I'm going to put some of it on my desktop because remember mine is glass. You could put it on your craft sheet or anything like that. I am going to dilute it a little bit with some water. So I'm spritzing. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blending foam. Now, I don't want to take my blending foam and just go plop into it and soak my blending foam. You really just want your paper towel or your blending foam, whichever it is you're using um, tonight. You just want it to be damp with the liquid. So I'm actually going into it from the edge and picking some of the moisture up. And I'm going to go onto my stencil and start to press and hold it in place. Now, distress inks react with water. And I'm hoping going to bring it up so you guys can see. See these droplets down here? 
see how they're lighter? Can you guys see that? So I'm just slowly, you know, blotting. And some of your um, liquid might get under the stencil. It's okay. It's a, it's a rainy day. It might be more blustery where you are. Don't worry. But that is why I'm trying to not soak my foam or soak my paper towel. If you're using a paper towel, you want to just keep like pouncing and pressing it in the same spot because it does take a minute for the inks to react to the water. Does this make sense, Kelly? Yes, it does. And I think um, if you don't, like if you if you want to kind of use foam, a makeup sponge, could, if you yep. don't happen to have, you know, a foam, but you still want to try to use foam is, a, is yep. a good way to try that. And I'm taking a peek under mine and I'm realizing that I'm not putting enough. So I don't know if I don't have enough water or what, but I'm got to pounce more. And I'm really actually swirling. I, I don't know if you see me, Kelly. I'm like pressing down and spinning in a circle. Like I'm okay. actually putting some decent pressure. Oh, okay. Almost Maybe like if we were rubbing some ink into those little droplets. Got it. And again, if any um, shimmery goodness seeps under your stencil, don't worry about it. You just have a blustery day. And I know you don't know what that is in Southern California, but... Honestly, yeah, we have no idea. We could, we could hide wind. Uh -oh, we're actually, just... we're going to have a blustery day tomorrow, I think. Oh, mine's very blustery. <laughs> More blustery than I would like. <laughs> I love doing these things, Kelly, because... I know it's like no, getting you out of your comfort zone. Like, yeah, she's like, okay, I got it. I am. I'm always like, okay, what can I teach? What can I do? I know. And now I've got. Oh, oh hey, everybody wanted me to share Liquid Stardust. I'm sharing Liquid I Stardust. I love that you're using this product in a different way too. So I am definitely not complaining. It's just a lot of blusters. It's a lot of blusters, and I mine might be too. I'm about to take my stencil off. It might be real blustery. Melissa said we don't get cold things. I'm like, very Look at tricky. that. It's not so cool. Oh, I can see it from my side. Yeah, I think I think mine's good. All right, all right. The moment of truth. Woo! Ooh. It's a, it's it's at the bottom, it's blustery. You'll just cover it with your images. Hold on one minute, Kelly. I'm gonna bring you up to the full screen so we can see your bluster. Oh, it's pretty. It's Our perfect. The bluster right no, there. We're gonna be covering that up. It's That's all good. Happened. It's really pretty. It's, it's so pretty. And so it's a nice shimmer. There's no real texture to it, like with a paste. So it's just a different look. There's no right or wrong way. It's just a different way, right? Now, something to mention with the liquid Sardis is kind of fun is, you know how some people, they'll ink blend with inks and then they splatter water on it. Mm -hmm. You can also splatter this stuff and it's like water, but sparkly water. So it's yes. yeah, that's really fun too. Normally I would work around this pile and use this again but because i'm live i'll probably drag something in it i'm not supposed to we are going to use liquid stardust later so if you put yours into a palette or something just set it aside don't clean it up or anything mm -hmm. like i am um but we can't do that part just yet That's all right so i'm just gonna zap mine with my heat tool real quick because we are gonna start to assemble our card and i just don't want my background to be super wet it's so sparkly now. <laughs> I love it. I just think it's so pretty. And I mean, it's glittering all the things in a different way. Exactly. And it's a, a bit of a less messy way for those that fear the, the loose glitter. Oh, yeah. It's definitely less messy for sure. All right. My heat, tool, my heat tool is really loud. I think I'm going to mute myself one second. Okay. So pretty. Oh my gosh. I literally could just sit here and like move it all night. Okay. So now we're going to do a little bit of assembly on our card and we'll die cut our letters. And then we have something else fun we're going to do um, with the liquid stardust as well. So I'm just going to take this panel and I'm actually going to use um, foam tape and pop it up off of this gray pattern paper.
I'm back. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> And someone asked if we mixed liquid stardust with water. Yes, we did. But a lot of people answered there. You guys are amazing. Um, and someone's asking if there's something between the stencil and the card. And the stencil was directly on to that ink blended piece. Yep. And the reason why we added water is because liquid stardust is very um, saturated in pigment. So you can... <clears throat> excuse me, you can use it in full strength, but you don't need to and it'll last longer. So that's why I spritzed a little water um, with it. And then also uh, the water, liquid stardust is a liquid, so it would have reacted with the inks, but adding the water helps it react even more. Go ahead, Kelly, sorry. And somebody mentioned that they've put the liquid stardust in a spray bottle, which you can do that and you can mix it with water in a spray bottle and like m mess around with the consistencies. And that's a really fun way to use this product as well. And like you said, I mean, I have the same bottle. Too. It, the bottle lasts forever, <laughs> which is great. I um, have liquid like stardust in a spray bottle. And um, what I love about it, because I always have it in there, is it never clogs the spray bottle. So even if I haven't used it for like a year, um, it will work fine. And then someone mentioned that their stardust, liquid stardust turned brown. In, email us at info at and we will replace that for sure. Um, and uh, heat tool with the fairy dust stencil piece, I wouldn't recommend the heat tool with that. I think it'll kind of warp it a little bit. Um, so maybe you can put it aside and we'll work on kind of the other, you can work on the very bottom of the card and then you could just assemble the last little pieces later once it dries. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is with our strips of cardstock, we are going to die cut some letters. And so I'm using Henry's ABCs, which we did use in the last Create With Us. But I saw a lot of you guys that were posting your cards, which, by the way, if you're creating with us tonight or tomorrow or a month from now and you want to share your cards, make sure you use the hashtag um, LF Create With Us that's at the bottom of the screen. Um, but I did see how you guys were using your all your stitched Oliver's ABCs. You were using Finley's. You guys can use any alphabet that you guys have. And we're just going to cut out the letters for splash. Yeah, I don't know why I did two strips. I had a feeling they were all going to fit on one. Better be safe than sorry. I know, especially on live, right? Exactly. I, I... I always save all those little strips of cardstock and I have a little bin and that's what I stamp my characters on. So I have this here and these are all pieces like little extra oh, yeah. pieces. Like you know, when you cut down for a card funder, it's like a random mm -hmm. size. I have an extra strip. I just save them all in this little bin and then I use those to stamp on. I have a tendency to rip cardstock a lot. Jacqueline here makes fun of Rebecca and I because we always rip instead of cutting a piece down to fit in a die cut machine and just rip it. And so oh. I like rip pieces and I can just she couldn't understand what all these rip pieces were. And then she sees the two of us crafting the other day. She's like, I get it now. Um, I just saw a question. Can I use Lawn Fawn Clear stencil paste on the blended panel? Yes, you can use anything through that stencil that you would like. And then someone mentioned that they um, are using Quinn's Capital ABCs. And I love that. That's oh, like, oh, my cool. favorite. And it's one of my favorites. I just saw that. Annalisa that said that. Like, she's, she's good. She posts her cards. I love so Quinn. Good. I use Quinn right. so much. Quinn's is one of my favorites. And also, um, oh, my gosh, well, all of them. Harold's. Smitty's, they're all older lawn font alphabets, um, but they are gorgeous. Uh, yes. And they're hand-drawn fonts. They're, they're really beautiful. Um, and Quinn's is really fun. There's a there's a lowercase and a capital or a uh, baby letters, as Mike Miles calls the uh, lowercase. And, um, and so you can actually color in the letters, which is really, really fun because it's a stamped outline that a die then can cut. So that was my first big investment stamp and die oh it's really Quinn's. was that Quinn's? Yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's still it's investment. still one of my favorites and it's from 10 years ago i think so i was gonna say that was one that i bought too with my hard-earned money yeah that was what that was my first like big investment lawn fun oh, well and i buy all of your alphabets because i love typography i talk about this in my classes a lot i just oh and yeah. our and our alphabets they're designed so that the base part the part that sticks to your acrylic block 
the letters all line up. So almost like doing um, printing, you can line up the letters and spell anything because they are placed onto that blob in the perfect placement so that everything lines up nicely. So they're really easy to use that way. They're not, the blob isn't, the back piece isn't the shape of the letter, it's a rectangle so that you can line them up. So it makes the alphabets really easy to use, which is great too. So what I did here, you guys, is I'm actually using the bow from the um, platform pop-up. I keep wanting to call it a pivot pop-up. It just shows how many more classes I've taught with pivot pop-up versus um, platform pop-up. Okay. Um, but I'm using the bow from the platform pop-up die. And um, we actually used the bow in a creative way last weekend in my, in my um, <laughs> very fun class. Because I really want to remind you guys to, you know, when you purchase your die sets and especially an interactive die, which can be a little bit of the pricier side because there's a lot to it. Just try to be creative with all the fun extra little elements that you get because then you're getting more bang out of your buck, right? So, and I love this little bow. Once you put it together, I think it's the sweetest little thing ever. Um, and so I think it's fun to see that you can use it. Um, on other things more than just your platform pop-up. So I'm just adding the bow along the seam of our blue and our gray ink. So if your seam still looks a little choppy, maybe, um, this is gonna clean that up right away. And we always put all these little extra things in dies and you know, we fill in all the little spaces with things so that you could use like the little flowers and hearts and stuff that are included on other cards, you know? So it really makes it nice that way. And I just put my strip down, but what you wanna do is put your strip down so that the seam is gonna be um, towards the left um, because that's where we're gonna put the bow. So just keep that in mind. Do as I say, not as I do. And I'm trying to find the picture of the card to help myself. No, oh, there we go. Okay. I can put it on camera too. I have enough room. Um, and then any extra pattern paper you have, you can just trim off. And again, don't worry about that seam. And then next I'm gonna put this little piece down. This is kind of like the tails to the bow and I put this down flat. But then the next piece, I am actually going to use a foam square or two and put it down. You could totally put it flat if you would like. I just really love adding a little foam square um, because I think it adds just this really fun little dimension. It almost makes it look like it is a real bow even more. And then to put the little knot down on the bow, I'm just adding a little glue tube to the bow and then placing the knot into that. So to, to recap, you put the bow ends flat, but the bow, actual bow popped. Yep. The tail parts of the bow is flat and then the full, like if you were to loop your bow yourself, the looped part is with foam squares. I'm terrible at making bows. So this, this I love this. Like yeah. a bow, but I didn't tie it. And it this is right up my alley. Um, I do just want to mention, even though we have liquid stardust on our stencil and ink, we can clean it later. But if you guys are working with paste, um, you will want to run to the sink and make sure you're cleaning that because paste drying on the stencil isn't fun to get off. Although if it ever happens to you, a credit card is a good way yeah, to... that's how I clean them. To... Oh, he's back. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, you got no. it? Yeah, I got it. Oh, goodness. Okay. Wow, they're really committed to the popular tonight. Life. Yeah. I just see it as we're just getting more popular, Kelly. It's just, yeah, it's like... Yes. Guess... Yeah. Oh, it's someone they're celebrating their birthday week. I like that. Oh, that's so awesome. So um, Sharon asked, is this kit still available? So we don't actually sell kits, Sharon, um, but we do have provided for you free on the Create With Us page, which is linked. You can kind of see the web address at the bottom of our video. Um, and it gives you all the instructions to make your own kit. 
What I will tell you is look at what you have, right? So if you have a different alphabet die set, use that. If you don't have this bow um, from the platform pop-up, use some ribbon. Um, you can totally change these cards to work with the supplies that you have. And we really encourage you guys to do that. Um, but at least the handout will give you a starting off point. And then mm -hmm. I want to ask, answer another question that someone's liquid stardust is I'm clogged. Good. Yeah. And if I uh, take a little, like a pin, like a sewing needle type thin pin or like the end of a safety pin and kind of add it in there, squeeze the bottle again. Sometimes when it's clogged, if it does happen, it actually just happened to me funny enough. So I just did the same thing. Um, I, uh, kind of squeezed a little bit out and not that much came out. I did the, the needle again, squeeze again. And then it just took three tries because mine I hadn't used it in a little bit. So it was a little more clogged. So that's a really good way to unclog it. All right. Oh, I almost just cut my L off. I don't even know why that didn't cut. Wow. Um, so I'm using foam strips to pop up my letters. Um, you can most certainly put yours on flat if you would like. And just like we did last time in the Create With Us with this font, um, I only put foam on the side that is the chunkiest of the side. Um, everything will still pop up fine. And I love these little foam strips because you don't have to cut them to be strips. And so I'm just going to put this on the back of each letter and we're going to put our words or our word along the bottom. I love you guys to mix and match. Like that's why I think getting at least one alphabet die set is really nice um, because I love, love, love to mix and match the smaller sentiments with a big, bold word like this. I just think it looks so nice on a card. And again, I love typography, so... We're also using um, this die set in my online class. So last weekend I taught my very fun class. Um, and then in two weeks I'm teaching my rain or shine class. So I try to reuse supplies and really give you guys more and more ideas to use with them. So I'm starting by putting my H down first on the far right and I'm gonna work left because I do want to try to leave a little space to the left where I'm going to fill in with a water splash. Thank you so much, Kathy. She said the gray bottom with the little bow is adorable. And I appreciate that. It's my kind of, um, my kind of bow. These S's trick me up every single time, I will say, on this Henry's. I always have to double check myself and make sure I'm not putting it down wrong. Does that happen to you, Kelly, with the S in this font? Oh, yeah. I always have to kind of. I always have to look. Even if you put them the other way, it looks fine. Just that both are the same. <laughs> both have to be the same. Exactly. Yes. Uh, Jen, somebody's asking, what do you mean by typography? Um, so I went to school for graphic design. And so typography is um, laying out type fonts. And so there's, you know, typography is the person that lays out the magazine or the newspaper. Um, so it's different fonts and laying out how the how the type is going to look on a poster. And it's just my most, I just love it. I love it. And I'm a little bit of a font snob. There's certain fonts you can never really use in my presence. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm very worried now. Somebody said they really like how you created the gray ground for the sentiment. It is so cute and the bow is a great touch. Thank you guys. So I have my letters on here and what we're going to do is um, we're going to use that liquid stardust again. So if you had yours in a little palette, um, that's perfect. I'm just going to put a little bit more out on my table and spritz it with a little bit of water. 
And then I'm going to just use a paintbrush. This is just a number four round paintbrush, but you literally can use anything. And I'm going to actually paint these letters. So I want to just put some of this liquid stardust on the letters fairly generously, meaning I'm letting it pool on the letters a little bit. Um, I'm not really wiping it as much. I'm more dabbing it. We probably should have made the rest of our scene, but maybe we'll just set this aside. I was just excited to show this to you. So that's why I think I got ahead of myself. It's so pretty. Well, um, and then what we're going to do is put glossy accents over it. And then it's like a whole nother level. I have, we have a question here, Jen. What occasion yep. would you send a make a splash card? A birthday? Question mark. Um, so make a splash, I think, could work for a birthday, but I also think it could work um, for maybe a friend that's making a job change or, you know, just made a big life decision. Or graduation. Graduation. I for a birthday, and what I do is I leave the inside blank, and then I stamp, like, either happy graduation or congrats or happy birthday on the inside. So it makes it clear like this is a birth. That's what I like for these kind of general sentiments. That's exactly so, what somebody else commented. Too. Yeah. If you're not totally sure, oh, I'm not sure who I'm going to give the card to yet. That's, that's a way you can kind of save that part and, um, and stamp the inside later with birthday or whatever it might, you might need. So I love these like more general sentiments because they work so well for stuff like that. I'm going to heat mine a little bit. It actually dries fairly quickly. Um, but look at it. It is so pretty. Oh, I love it. Now I want to like liquid stardust everything. I almost misspelled splash. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. Bad. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. All right, so then what we're going to do is move along and add the rest of our images. We're going to build our little scene. So I've got a couple puddles and a couple splashes. So I'm going to grab those. Melissa is asking, since she's behind, could she add liquid star test to the entire strip and then die cut her letters? Um, you could. It might crumble a little bit on the edges because sometimes when liquid stardust dries, it is very dry. Um, but you could try it for sure. It's worth a try. And then you got to report back. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, I'm just now catching up too. So I'm with you. The worst case is you will just have to ink blend another panel and die cut again. That's not the end of the world. Remember you guys, most of this is just plain cardstock paper. So it's good to experiment and see what works. And for um, those people that are um, kind of catching up, Jen, mm -hmm. uh, what uh, did you add water to the liquid stardust when you painted or was this straight liquid stardust? I did, I still added a little bit. I almost always add a little bit and um and do you is it like a spray or is it a lot just so people kind of know um you know a little like, bit <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. i'm like i'm asking for a friend i could just say jen's not gonna have an exact amount <laughs> yeah she was like and by people she means yeah. kelly i'm asking for a friend <laughs> yeah um just so with my distress sprayer I probably didn't squeeze it all the way down. I oh, just okay. did like a few little droplets, but it also depends how much liquid stardust you put out. Just a little bit. There's so many variables. <laughs> I know. Just a little bit, Kelly. It's going to be okay. <laughs> this isn't a proper experiment with so many variables. <laughs> it's all going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, Sharon I know, says I know a little there's dab will do in the comments that's like thinking the same thing I am. I know there's someone. And if you are coming in late, you guys, we are finishing up this card and we're going to work on the platform pop-up. So you don't feel like you should rush through this card. 
you could watch this card on replay and just pick up with us with the platform pop up. I um, love watching these letters change as you paint them. Oh my right? God. Because it's distress inks, they're reacting to the water, the little bit of water in the um, liquid stardust. So I'm going to add both of my little bears with foam squares. I like that rhyme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, pu the puddles I put down flat. And on the handout, you guys, when I do the handout for this and for my online classes, I always list out what I what I used foam squares for, what I glittered, because I know it's hard to tell in the photo. And maybe you are doing the class at a little bit of a different pace, which is totally OK. You can always refer to that handout and not feel like you're lost, hopefully. is my, That's my goal, at least. Someone saying an ombre effect on the letters would be pretty too, and it would be. That would be gorgeous. Oh, yeah. I sense a rainbow, all the things happening. Oh, people are mentioning their 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 uh, fonts they can't stand. Oh, I'm not gonna look because I'll get on a soapbox. Well, we don't want to insult anyone. We don't want to insult anyone's favorite yeah. font. Yeah, true, true. I'll be good. Um, I'll talk about the fonts I don't like in my private class. <laughs> Um, so I'm adding a little splash to the umbrella up here, which I just have to say, I think is the sweetest thing ever. I think it looks adorable. And I love this little bear that is jumping in the puddle. He's my favorite, the little guy. Well, a couple people have just, just found us, which is awesome. We're so glad you guys are here. <laughs> and Elise from the design team is in, uh, commenting in there. Hi, Elise. <laughs> oh, hi, Elise. Awesome, awesome. And then a couple more of these little trio droplets is what I'm calling them. I love them because they're great little accents to just make things come alive. And so I have them splashing off of the letters. And then I have them splashing off of this little guy's puddle too. And you guys can see I spaced out my letters different tonight than I did originally. And I'm going to fill in with a splash and it's going to be okay. So your card doesn't always have to look identical to, you know, your what you're following along with. Uh, thank you so much, you guys. I'm seeing all your sweet comments about the card design. I really appreciate that. Yeah, this is so fun. And I'm covering up my blusters if anyone was worried. <laughs> we were very worried over here. Yeah, everybody was very worried about. I am not my containing problems. Problems. I am not containing all my little bits like I usually try to do on my lawn fawn lives. They're yeah, everywhere. My, my, our desk has gone has gone crazy here. Yeah, I don't know where my mermaid dish is. I was looking for it, but I don't know. I do have my I do have my little characters. I always have a little. Yeah, no, mine. Mine are just getting tossed everywhere. I'll do a little Instagram story after, and everybody can see my disaster. <laughs> All right, now we have a little sentiment banner, and what I'm going to do on there is I'm going to just stamp make a. Which, by the way, this is the cute stamp set. Again, I'm not very in time with what I'm sharing. But we're going to just stamp Mega. You could cut your stamps apart if you would like. But I also just find it just as easy to just ink up the letters that you want, the words that you want. Ah. Diana said on Facebook, warning, you are going to be addicted. These ladies are awesome. Well, thank you. So I just inked up Meka, and I'm going to do it on the very far right side of this little banner. Everyday sentiment banners are life. Yes. I, I want to say, no, my most used dyes are the stitch rectangles and the outside in stitch rectangles. But then after that, it's the sentiment. Yeah. yeah, I use outside in stitch rectangles and it's all Shari's fault. Every single time I die cut one. 
Well, I'm going to say, so when I prep for the, like making, remaking the design team cards, I always grab the regular and then I cut and then I'm like, why do I even bother? It's always the outside in. Yeah. The outside in gives you the um, five and a quarter by four this, inch this size, size. That size rectangle, but with the stitching and, um, and it also gives you an outside stitched area, which is kind of fun because you can make a stitched opening as well. But those are the design team's absolute favorites. Which you totally could have used for this card, but I do try to keep the amount of supplies that we use not too crazy. So I didn't want people to feel like they had to buy everything on the Lawn Fawn website. I mean, eventually they should, but. But there's uh, so many things, but yes, the most used and the most purchased die, if you look at our like stats is large stitch rectangles. So Everything is in place on my messy desk. I'm trying to move some of it out of view. <laughs> Let me just shove it aside. Um, um, yeah, I'm sorry, there's just there's one question. Somebody said their rain stencil was out of stock in their local scrapbook store. Do you have a suggestion for making similar raindrops without it? The stamp set would be a good way to do it because you could even heat emboss them in white on the, on the background, or you could die cut the little raindrops and layer them around too. And that could be a fun way to get a similar rainy sky we also had the rainy portrait thing oh background. yeah there's also a rainy uh, uh dye so it cuts raindrops instead of stenciling raindrops so there's a couple of different options you have i actually like the heat box version that sounds really that'd be awesome. really pretty so, yeah, yeah. Really pretty. um so what i did you guys this is my original card and you can see these letters like the dimension on them so what i do is i go in with glossy accents and I am very generous and glossy accents will stay on the letter. Um, very rarely does it run off out of what you've filled it in with. It stays in the lines, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so I'll bring this up to the camera. Maybe you guys can see, see that dimension. So I'm going to do a very generous one coat and I'm going to let it dry. Is everybody listening? And then I'm going to do a second coat and your letters are going to be like, what? Melissa also said that she hurt, she liquid stardust and then die cut and it worked and she's going to put awesome. the phone. Good to know. Thank you, Melissa, for reporting back. So this um, glossy accents, when you do it this generously, um, where I live, um, we have a decent amount of humidity. So it's probably going to take like a half hour, 45 minutes to dry, which really means at this point, I'll leave it till probably tomorrow and I'll do another generous coat once it's really nice and dry. I'm going to continue with my glossy accents and put them on all the water things that I can reach. Um, you could also do this before you assemble your card and let your items, you know, let your glossy ice items dry and then assemble your card. But I also think just filling it in where you're able to reach your little nozzle in works. But I love, love, love adding glossy accents to all these water droplets and puddles and pretty much the only thing I'm not putting glossy accents on is the stenciled droplets. And then the very last thing I'm going to do to this card is I'm going to use a black glaze pen. This is not, you know, a make or break thing, um, but it's just a glaze pen by Sakura. And I'm going to use it on the noses of the bears and their little buttons on their coats. Oh, that's a and cute I just idea think of buttons. It just adds a little something, something. Super cute. And then that is card number one. I know that one took a little long. I had a lot of fun techniques I wanted to share with you guys. The platform pop-up, since we have all of our coloring done, is going to come together fairly quickly-ish. Um, 
Judy asked, where do I find the magic mat? Do you mean this station that we did our stenciling on? Because if you do, you will find it at lawnfawn.com. And I will link it. And you can get it on sale, right? Is it all the items in the shop, Kelly? Yep. yep. Awesome. So yeah. And it's 15% off. All right. I didn't, do, I'm going to do my glossy accents later, but. One minute. Let's both hold our cards up. Oh. Okay. I thought I could do this. Oh, yeah. There. Yay. Oh, oh I don't know why I was trying to turn. <laughs> I was pulling a shari. I'm trying to get it, get the light, all the sparkles. Look at that. Ooh so, so another little secret, you guys, is even though Rebecca and Shari aren't on camera, behind the scenes, we can see them. And Shari's wagging her finger at me because I'm teasing her. Oh, really? Oh, I can't see them. Only you can. Yeah. Uh, only I can. Oh, you have the power. Um, no, Shari and I co-taught a class in the fall, which I love. So I should probably be nice and not tease her too, too much about it. Um, but she um, kept struggling real hard with the orientation of the camera. It was so cute. Which Shari and I are going to be teaching another Lawn Fawn class together in May. So details of that will be coming out soon as well. That's exciting. And I get to see Jen and Shari in person in May. So now I'm just bragging, but I'm very excited. <laughs> miles. I can't wait. Oh my goodness. It's crazy because of COVID and everything. Jen and Shari have never met my little guy. So well, I'm pretty excited. I'm really excited. All right, you guys. I am not seeing him in four days. I like really missed him. I know. Because Rebecca gets to see him all the time. He calls her Becky. Becky. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm going to keep my bow pieces in the bag. I think that's a really smart idea, Jen. Well, I like this stitched banners, like that stitched wavy banner, but the straight one. Oh. Just write that down. Oh, yeah, that's a um all right you guys are we ready to make a platform pop up let me know in the comments if you guys have been already making these yourself i know a lot of you guys have because there are so many awesome platform pop-ups being posted out in the world i see them in the lawn fanatics uh facebook group and on the lawn fawn hashtag on instagram and uh, there was a, you may have answered it already just before we start the platform pop up, uh, but how to not get bubbles and glossy accents. So my thing is, is baby glossy accents. Don't buy the big bottle. Oh my gosh, look at my fingers. Don't buy the big bottle, buy the baby bottle. And, and I always and keep ours that. is a similar, you know, there's a cut of a glare glaze. This, the lump on one is thicker. The glossy accents is thinner. So they kind of have two different uses, which is really cool. Um, and, but they're both smaller containers, which is nice. Yes. Having smaller containers and keeping them stored upside down. Every so once in a while, like the baby, I guess, can you see if Henry says all this stuff? Every once in a while, um, the baby glossy accents, I will get a little bubble and I just use my piercer tool here and I'll just touch the bubble with that and it'll pop it, but definitely. Oh wait, I'm trying to get him. Somebody was asking where Francois was, but of course I'm blocking for the poor Francois. Oh. Here, here, here. And this you is... saw the question, Kelly, about Henry's. Yeah, it, it is. It is out of. Stock. It is out of stock. Well, I know that we received like it must have been like fifteen boxes today. So I'm really there hoping. Are, yeah. Really yeah. hoping it's. In, but make sure to sign up to be notified because the second it's back on the website, you get an email immediately, and we'll be um, inputting those boxes. They kind of arrived late today, so we'll be inputting those on Monday morning, and uh, and they'll they'll come right in there. So. <laughs> okay. So platform pop up. So fun. And I have to say, Flippin' Awesome is wicked easy to put together. Reveal Wheel, I think, is very easy now that we have the templates to put together. But this one's right up there. This, the, those are the top three that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. um, and once you guys know how to put in um, scalloped box card pop up, too. But once yes. you guys learn how to put this together... Oh my gosh, the creativity and the things that you guys are creating with it is just so incredible. And I love, 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 love seeing everything that you guys are posting. 
Um, all of the dies here on the left side of my magnet board are part of the die. And then this is just the add-on. Um, we, I am using the little clouds from the add-on today, but you guys obviously don't need those. We're using the add-on in my online class. So I knew quite a few of you might've already been enabled to buy that. Um, it's not needed. It's just something cute as an accessory, but you don't need it for the functionality of the platform pop-up. So, so here's um, a good example of one without it. Let me bring you up, Kelly. It. Yeah. And then Jen, can you there grab you me one or Jen, Rebecca, one from over there that's got the, the add on. Oh, so what right. I love about the die is that it looks really cute with it or without it. It's not a necessary thing. And I love that we're going to do one today that's without the add on. And so just to show you, it's a really cute one. I, I think this one's by Mindy. It is. Um, you get it? And so this one has the add on. So it gives you this almost like a little amphitheater look where you can decorate the back and then here's one without. So I love the look of both. And just, it's kind of nice to see the same die used in, in kind of two different ways. And then we'll get to do it in another way now too. Hello, Vanessa from Butterfly Reflections. Um, I just wanted to answer a question real quick. Sharon asked, what are the reveal wheel templates? Um, every reveal wheel shape um, and opening um, has a template. So it makes it so much easier to know exactly where to stamp whatever you want to show on your window. Um, I think Kelly's trying to look for one. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't um, My bag is right here. We had oh, to do we had to do a little construction in the office here, so all of our, our bits and pieces some. are all over the place. Oh. So this is a reveal wheel template. This one is for the the it's the one with the cloud. Oh my goodness! It's the ice cold? cream and the unicorns. Yes, or unicorn picnic. Oh, thank unicorn you, unicorn picnic. But so basically you just put this over the scalloped circle that you cut for the reveal wheel. And then, you know, right where you're going to stamp maybe your little faces or. And we have sparkles. the intro. If, if both Rebecca and Jen can find the link, we actually have a video that's like an intro to how these templates work um, to show you how they work. So if you, if yeah, uh, Rebecca it. and um, Shari can link those, then you guys can watch that video and see exactly how they work. And then, all of them work in the same way, which is really great. And they just make putting a reveal wheel together so easy. So like real quick before I start the platform pop up, the reveal wheel came out and I normally travel and teach in-person classes before the pandemic. And I taught the reveal wheel for months and then we thought of the templates and by we i mean lawn fawn i didn't um thought of the templates and just teaching a reveal wheel without the templates versus teaching it with it was like night and day it was so easy it was so nice so and then treat so yourself the to the room treat yourself to the templates the Sorry. Template. and they're inexpensive they're like three dollars five dollars depending on how many are included in the pack um this is the somebody was asking the name of this this is the clear glaze so it's kind of like glossy accents but it's it's thicker so it's kind of nice if you really want like a 3d like on the water drops um so they're kind of they're both really awesome good you know good products to use yeah if you don't have either um, take advantage of the Lawn Fawn sale and grab the glaze pen and try it out. And then someday try glossy accents. The, both of them are very inexpensive. I mean, the baby bottle of glossy accents is under $3 and the glaze pen is around that mm -hmm. price too. So three, yeah, three or four dollars. Yeah. So yeah, it's inexpensive. Yeah. And um, I'm so glad that you guys are loving the platform. A lot of people loving the platform pop up that we're going to learn how to make now. Um, someone even made Easter cards for her coworkers. And I think that's so cool. Oh, I actually, when Kelly and I, um, well, really Kelly was teaching um, retailers how to make this before it came out. And I attended to just kind of uh, be there. I made them while she was teaching. And so I've kept them. They're going to be Easter cards for all my nieces and nephews. So I got to get those in the mail soon. All right. I am going to use quarter inch tape and eighth inch tape. I'm going to start with the quarter inch tape. This is the Lawn Fawn tape. Works really well, um, nice and strong. And I don't know why I'm tearing it off yet. I'm just telling you to get it out. Sorry. So we are basically going to make the same thing twice. So I'm going to set aside one of the main panels 
and one of the T's. We're just going to set them aside. I keep looking at my first card thinking it's the wet glossy accent one. I'm just going to move this. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to just fold the um, folds on the score line that the die does for you. They might be a little tricky to see on the pattern paper. I always recommend to people to um, die cut your interactive dies out of solid cardstock and even just store them with the die so that when it's late at night, which is probably when most of us have time to actually craft, um, and your eyes are tired and you're tired, you can just pull out that cardstock piece and it'll help show you where you're supposed to be looking on your cute pattern paper piece, just as a trick. And so I'm just folding all of these. The diagonal lines are going to be the outside. So I'm folding them all in. So flower to flower, essentially. Yours, your flowers could be the outside. I'm not sure how you die cut them, but by my instructions, the diagonal lines are going to be the outside. And I always think of it as folding mountains or folding away from myself. Um, we do have one question that I want to make sure I answer from Northern Mom that she forgot to put the code in on the sale. If that ever happens to you, just email us at info at and we will put the code on for you. Uh, we won't, uh, customer service Jess will not be in until Monday. So don't worry that you don't get a response till Monday, but she'll help you on Monday. So don't worry about it at all if you forgot the code. Just and email, email us. is in the comments. I put okay, I answered her. So just that email is in the comments. So you don't, you'll have it to look at later if you need to. Um, I'm just laughing because Pam on Facebook just said that she just ordered my sweater. <laughs> Good super sleuthing, Pam, that you found it. I was going to say, where's it from? Um, so I've got this T and at the bottom of the T is a score line. So I'm just going to fold that back. I just like to get all my folding done ahead of time. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to put some quarter inch tape on that fold of the T. And this is tricky to see because I know it's white on white, but right on the top of that folded piece. And then I'm also going to put some quarter inch tape right on this tab that is down by the slot here. So this tab right here. Okay. All right, and so now what I'm going to do is I like to look at the inside. So I'm gonna look at the floral paper and I'm gonna take my T, okay? It's an upside down T now and the tape is on the top. And I'm gonna put this into this slot right here and pull it nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to fold up on the first main fold. Okay, so it's just like this. And I have my tape on the top. I'm gonna peel that off and then tuck that tab down. And now that I just said that, I know, I think Kelly, you do it a little bit differently. Yeah, so um, and so I'll show the other way too that Kelly does. She'll have the tape on the bottom, right, Kelly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, so it'll, yeah. Through, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. So yeah, the tape's on the bottom, but it's the same thing. So you're folding along that first big fold, and then we're pulling it nice and tight against that edge, and then you're pressing down so that it ends up, I'll hold it here, it ends up looking like that, and Jen's showing you that as well. So it's attached like right underneath that next score line there. Yeah. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm gonna peel the tape off from this other tab that we put the tape on. And I'm going to fold up on that next main fold. Let me hold this up. So we folded this one, right? 
Now I'm going to fold up on this next main fold that we creased. And the tab is going to get tucked under so that it goes along the scalloped edge like this. So you can see my tab is right here. It's sticky on the top. And I just tuck it under. And that way everything falls into place of where it needs to be to make a structure. And so you Everybody see. just got real quiet. Real quiet. <laughs> and I did want to mention that someone said that something they wanted just came back in stock. Um, so Minnie, just write us at info at and we'll get that added for you. So anything like time that that happens and we'll make sure you get the, the percentage off too. So write info at Lawn and just tell Jess I sent you. <laughs> all right. The good thing is, is we get to do it all over again, which is awesome because practice makes perfect, right? And every time you make one of these, you practice twice. So you'll get twice as good, twice as fast. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure all my folds are folded. Each main fold, the die puts the crease in the paper for us. So it takes all of that guesswork away. We don't need to measure anything, which I love because I don't measure. I We eliminated all the measuring just for you, Jen. Thank you. That's so nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of measurement went into this one, yes, too. Yes, we do all the measuring beforehand so that no one has to later, right? Funny thing is, we do the measuring, Jen. So, you know. Yeah, there's, we <laughs> And then I'm going to take my little T, remember, and there's a score line towards the bottom. I'm just going to fold that. All right, we've got everything folded. So I'm going to open this up again. So I'm looking at the flower side of the paper, the inside of the platform pop-up, and the scallop is at the top. I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on the little tab of the T that little piece we just folded. And then I'm also gonna put some, and this is the quarter inch tape. I'm gonna put some quarter inch tape on the tab of the platform pop-up on the diagonal side of the paper, on the front, basically. And now I'm gonna take the tape off, uh, like the liner tape off of the T-tab. Okay, so it's sticky. And I'm going to put it into the slot so that the sticky is upside down. And then you're just going to always want to pull it taut so it's nice and snug against, um, so the top of that T is nice and snug against the pattern paper. And I'm folding up on that first fold and laying that tab down. So it'll look like this and it's stuck. I'm trying to show you guys at all angles because I know sometimes online is tricky. That's the nice thing about getting to do this live. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to peel the liner off of our other tab. And we're going to fold up on the second main fold, tucking that tab in. So it will line up just below the scallops, just like that. And now we have two identical pieces. How's everybody doing? Those of you guys that are making it with us, if this is um, your first time making it, let us know if you have any questions. I'm going to wait a minute. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, that's very sweet. Comments. We do have a question about how do you come up with the ideas for interactive cards? Well, that's that's uh, me and, and Rebecca here. And then with the um, other wonderful people on our team, Renata and Erica, who's one of the other owners of Lawn Fun. And we come up with stuff and a lot of the stuff we're making it with exacto knives and scissors yeah. and scoring and trying to figure out how to make it work before we create it into a die. And one of the, the cool things as we create these is we do a lot of Kind of bad of, ones, yeah, but there's a lot of bad ones, and uh, and we keep doing all of these different, you know, uh, sam you know, versions, versions of them and everything, and then we often then we send it to our manufacturer and we get a version made 
by the manufacturer. And when we do that often, then we're testing everything again and we make changes then as well. So we'll have lots of different versions of like our hand cut versions and then lots of versions that are actual real dyes because we want it to work perfectly. A good example is the magic picture changer. We have like an extra 64th of an inch built into the fold. So that when it folds, it's perfect because there's a little bit of height. So like everything is is done so that when you create with it, and when I create with it, anybody creates with it, it works perfectly without having to think about all these little extra things. So it, they're, they're our favorite. Honestly, it's, it's, it's the hard part, but it's the favorite part and the most fun part. My so, favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> Not the measuring. The measuring is never a good part. <laughs> Um, there's a few people that are just saying it's getting late for them. So they're going to rewatch this and make it tomorrow. Totally okay. Also remember that there's an intro video as well, um, where Kelly goes through very calmly and explains how to put it together too. So you have both of those resources um, to be able to see how to do that. All right. So now that we have these two pieces together, um, what we're going to do is make them one continuous piece. So you can kind of see, you know, we've got our flat edge right here, and then we've got a little folded tab right here, right? And same thing, flat edge on the left, folded tab on the right, which I forgot to fold mine, okay? So we're going to go ahead and put the quarter inch tape on both of these folded tabs on the diagonal paper side, so on the front of the pattern paper. Um, I had somebody in my class last weekend when we did one of these in the Berry Fun class, and um, she's a local friend of mine. She actually used to take my classes all the time at the local store I used to manage. She's been taking classes with me for over a decade. And um, she was watching the replay of the class and was getting really frustrated. And she posted in the class group. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so frustrated. And so every I actually didn't see it right away. But everybody from class was chiming in. What's happening? How can I help you? Whatever, you know. And um, and I even messaged her because I know her really well. And anyways, long story short, she came back the next day and she was like, oh, it, it was so easy. She's like, I just, I wasn't in the right mindset to see what was happening. So sometimes that happens too. All right. So we have our tabbed piece on the right and we've got our flat edge here. What I like to do is kind of slide them to each other across the table. I say that they're going to kiss. So they come to each other on the table and they kiss. Mwah! And then we fold that tab down onto the other piece. So I'm just going to peel that off so it's nice and sticky. And this is a great way for it to line up straight instead of trying to do it in the air. So again, I go across, they kiss, and then I lay that tab down. And now it's just one continuous piece. Okay. All right. So now you could put a third T in here. Um, and again, the intro video shows you how to do that, but what Grace came up with and figured out from the design team is if you cut yourself, this is a three and a half inch circle out of acetate. We're actually going to put a piece of acetate in the center here. And then that way we're going to have this clear piece to be able to decorate so that it looks like my rain clouds are floating. It looks like my little raindrops are floating and it's just going to look really stinking cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to still stick with that quarter inch tape and um, I'm going to add it to one of these panels. Right on that main panel here. Okay. Just kind of showing you all angles so you can see. And I'm going to peel this off. And I'm going to stick my circle right to that just so that it's lined up with the bottom. You don't want it to overhang the bottom. I mean, you could go higher up if you wanted, but we don't want it to overhang the bottom. And then on my other one, I'm going to go ahead and put some tape. Uh, 
And as you're putting your tape on there, I just want to say hi to Christy Gullard. She just said hi, but Christy is incredible. And she made a lawn fawn quilt that is oh, absolutely yes. amazing. It hangs in our office and we get to see it every day. So we think about you every single day, Christy. And you also made my son a beautiful quilt too. And we have it in his room. And so we lay right on it every day when we read our stories. So thank you, Christy, for being amazing and letting us admire your beautiful creativity every day here. So awesome. I've seen that quilt. It's beautiful. We were pointing out, he points out all the animals to me on the blanket. <laughs> and so now what we're going to do is you're essentially just folding this in half so that the two bottoms line up. like a book and then it sticks together and then your other little tab at the end you're just tucking it under and sealing in that little closure and then if you push up from the bottom you're getting your platform pop-up with our super secret circle so fun and I want to show you, since we've been talking about the acetate circle, some other versions where we've used that. So this is a design by Grace that I recreated because it is epically gorgeous. And um, and that we've got the rainbow on the acetate and the clouds, which is really cute. And then here we used it for letters. So you can use it as part of your sentiment, making a cute little cake. Uh, which is really adorable. And then here we use it for sunflowers. Um, and maybe Rebecca and Shari can link, we're actually donating 100% of the net profits from some sunflower and blue and yellow theme products to save the children for Ukraine. So um, we did a hop with a lot of our different friends from companies um, that uh, Katya from Studio Katya put together. So anyways, this was the card we made for that. So I think it's really fun to pile up all the flowers and you get that height, which is really cool too. Awesome. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our little hillsides. So remember, these are part of the die. There's little hillsides and there's little grass. You can do either or. Um, and to add these in, this is when I like to use the one eighth inch tape because it's nice and skinny. And whenever you're building any of the structures, any of like the lawn fawn structures that are going to be, you know, popped up and pushed, you want to use really strong adhesive. And I also don't want to use a wet glue because I don't want it to ooze out where it's not supposed to be. So I'm putting it on the back, right along the bottom. Okay. And I'm doing it on both of these. <clears throat> um. There was a question. Oh, is there any trick to die cutting the acetate? Even with shim, she can't get it to cut in less than 10 passes. Uh, I, I would hmm. just say, because um, I don't have a problem with the lawn fawn acetate, but I would just make sure that um, you could try doing it at an angle so that you're not going straight in down the center. Mm -hmm. um, but... I, I'm not sure what machine you have. I mean, I just have this. Also, but the acetate is almost too thin and too flimsy. It may be very difficult to cut. And that could be the problem as well. Um, but and, and if you're having any issues with our acetate, make sure to write us at info at lawnpond.com and we can help you even more individually as well. I will say one of the tricks that I do sometimes with the acetate, which I haven't, um, just to keep it so it doesn't scratch, is I put it between copy paper. So that yeah. kind of adds an extra layer of shim. I don't know. And the lawn fawn acetate, just so you guys know, it is really nice and sturdy, um, but it's also heat resistant, which is another cool thing. If you wanted to emboss your raindrops on here ahead of time or, oh, I just thought of other really cool ideas. My brain just like went. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just attach these hillsides to the fronts of the T's. And also, uh, Cindy wrote about an issue with her order. Email us at info at lawnfawn.com and Jess will help you right away. She will be in on Monday morning. We, we do weekends off here, uh, but we will help you right away. I'm so sorry about that, but we'll help you um, as soon as we can. And anytime there's ever an issue, just email us at info at lawnfawn.com and Jess is amazing and she'll be there to help you out. So now we have our little hillsides in there. And then the other thing we're going to do is add the bow. 
And what I decided to do, again, I'm always just trying to think of different things to share with you guys, um, is we're actually going to have the bow go all the way around the box. And we'll have a sentiment on the stitched um, rectangle. So let's go ahead and do the bow part first. So the bow, I cut four of those little strips, okay? Um, and they do have a little crease line on them. It's a little tricky to see. I don't even think it's going to show up on camera. But a trick that you can do is if you lay your platform down flat, is we know that it was originally designed so that you guys can have your bow on the front, right? With a seam in the center. Like we know that's how it's supposed to work. So I always just lay it down and then I just fold it back on the fold of the box. And then you can just fold it the right way once you pick it up. But that's kind of my trick if you can't see um, the score on the pattern. So I just lay it down and then fold it back. It is Colored, very cardstock. Colored cardstock, it will show up fine. It's just the pattern that's the pattern paper that's so cute that we have to use. It's sometimes tricky to see. The texture cardstock definitely too is another one that makes it a little harder to see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're just gonna add these on, I'm just gonna use my dot runner. And um, I was like, where'd my other one go? And then we'll do the same exact thing on the back. Our seam on the back will get covered up with our um, stitched rectangle. So I'm going to lay it down. And honestly, it doesn't even matter if when you're laying it down, it's not, uh, you're not folding it on the score. It does not matter. It's going to still work and look wicked cute. I think even type A Kelly will agree. Yes, you actually don't. The, the box will fold it for you, <laughs> essentially. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I do not use my dot runner as much anymore because I love my long pong glue tube and use it so much um, that it's in my drawer for a long time. And then whenever I take it out, it's there's cat hair. Everything. <laughs> So if you guys are watching me on like a massive TV, like I know some of my students do, um, don't be laughing at me that you're seeing Jack and Mr. Harley's cat hair on this project. <laughs> um, there's Aussie hair on ev everything. everything in this office. Yeah. Yes. And they, and like Murphy hasn't been in this office for like a year. And yeah. Still, it, just, it, it comes in on me. It comes in on everything I bring home. Yeah. There's yeah. Aussie fur everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> I know my my girls don't shed, so it's definitely Aussie fur. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it's it's all Murphy. <laughs> all right. Oh my gosh, I clearly don't put tape runner all the way to the end like I'm supposed to. You're too used to the glue tube. I seriously am, honestly. All right, so now we've got that cute pink stitched stripe all around. So on the front, we are going to go ahead and build our bow. And I'm going to do it the same way I did on my card. I'm going to put that first layer down flat. I'm going to use foam squares to put that second layer because I just have to. When we start to decorate inside the platform pop-up, we're not going to want to use any foam squares. So it'll lay nice and flat and pop up correctly. Um, but this girl's just got to pop up something. So, <laughs> and then I'm going to put a little dab of glue tube to put my little knot of the bow on. And then we have our stitched rectangle. And what I did for my stitched rectangle is I stamped... I love you, rain or shine. And I love you is going to be in the guava ink. 
is one of my favorite colors, besides the teals, of course. And one of my favorite fruits. <laughs> um, Jen, somebody's asking if you post on Instagram. Oh, yeah. I post a lot on Instagram. A and lot. you can just search a lot. <laughs> Thanks no, for that. No. You know, honey, you're on our Instagram, your own Instagram. You, you're, you have a good presence. Thank you. I think that's a compliment. You were just cute. I know you meant it that way, but you were like a lot. And I was like, oh, uh oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can just search for my name, um, Jen with two N's and Shirkus, the last name, and um, which is on the handout, and I'll come up. So Diane is asking if you can get free shipping during the sale. If your order is over, I believe it's 75, right? Um, you'll automatically get free shipping. So you don't need a code. So even though you can only enter in one code, yeah. it'll you'll automatically get free shipping um, with that. If you happen to have a free ship code and you're trying to do both, just email us at info at and we can, we can help you uh, do both of those together. So I spaced out my sentiment a little bit more than I had wanted to. So I'm putting a little heart because, you know, there's always a fix. Because, you know, there's always a heart in one of our sentences. Yes, <laughs> I know. I there's looked. Secret. I was like, is there an individual heart? Oh, yeah, there <laughs> there's is. always a heart somewhere. Aw. Um, Annabella said, I like Jen's walks and talks. I know I haven't been talking as much on my walks lately, but I promised myself and made it public that I'm walking every day in April and I'm doing really good. Shari and I actually were FaceTiming the other day going over some stuff and I realized it was like 6.15 and um, I hadn't walked yet. And I was like, oh, I got to go. Like, I didn't want to be out there at, at night. We actually have coyotes in the neighborhood. So I didn't want to be walking at night. All right. Then I have these little clouds. Again, these were from the add-on. But if you don't have the add-on die, there's a lot of other lawn fawn sets that have cute little clouds. Um, or you could even all use... All the clouds. Oh, there's a set called All the Clouds. which all has the every clouds. Clouds. Or there's or also you, a cloud in here. I was going to say, or you could just use another one of the clouds from the stamp set. Um, I, on the sample, was trying to be creative with my Copic markers on the clouds. And I don't really like how that turned out. So I'm just dusting the edge of these clouds with my blender brush and the little bit of hippo ink that's left on here from the beginning of class when we did um, the dusting on the bow for the first card. So I just wanted to like make them a little bit more rainy clouds than nice sunshiny clouds. Um, so I'm going to add my stitched rectangle on flat, but then I pop the clouds up off of it. And this is just a really cute way to add a sentiment to this project. Um, and the stitched rectangle is part of the actual die, which is really nice. And uh, Diana, I know you're still having some issues on the site. I'm not sure why, but just uh, email us at info at um, and say you were having some issues and we'll make sure we get you both. You could always do it and we can either refund you the shipping or you can wait till Monday and we'll make sure that you get the 15% off. Um, and you can just tell Jess that I, that I sent you from the Create With Us class. And I'm changing my positioning of my clouds a little bit just because I changed the way my sentiment is. And again, I hope you guys know when you do these classes with us, we never expect that you have to copy our designs. Your cards are your cards and you can copy or you can do whatever inspires you. All right. And then the fun part, you guys, we get to make our little scene, which we're pretty much just sticking on all of our pieces that we have already colored. Um, the one thing I want to do is with one of my clouds, I'm going to stamp a cute little smiley face that's included in this set. 
I will tell you, I adore the little frog that is in this set, but I was being really good about the amount of Copics that I was using in class. So I didn't introduce the frog because I didn't want to have to like put more colors, but we're using him a lot in my online class. I love him. He's adorable. And so let me just show you a couple things. I also had you guys cut a strip of acetate. Let's actually do that first so we don't lose it. Um, I got I had you guys cut a strip of acetate. There's really no right or wrong size to this because you're going to kind of determine what you want. But basically what's fun about the acetate strip is we can make our little jumping puddle bear actually jump. So let's actually stick a puddle down first. And I like to tuck behind the puddles the splashes. So I've got my puddle right here and I'm going to add a little bit of glue tube to the bottom of a splash. And I just kind of tuck it behind the puddle, just like that. And I'll do the same for the other one. Okay. And remember, they're splashes. There's no right or wrong way for them to look. And then I'm going to add the puddle to the front of the front hillside on the right. So just like that. And now what I'll do is I'm gonna take the acetate and I'm actually gonna use my dot runner for this. And I'm gonna stick the acetate behind that puddle I just put down. So it's just this long piece of acetate and I'm gonna put a little dot runner behind the jumping bear. And he can be as high or as low as you want, right? That's what's fun. And once I get him stuck to the acetate, I'll trim off the extra acetate. So he is not on the circle. I'm gonna bend the circle back. He is just flying in the air, having a good old jump. Super cute, Kelly. And then that piece of acetate that I just cut off, I'm going to actually add behind the splash to add a little droplet, like those, tr those trio droplets. So I stuck that behind. And then I'll grab one of these little trio droplets, put some dot runner on it. And again, this can be as high or as low as you want. That's what's so fun about building these, you guys, is you really can just be so creative, come up with a whole little story, and I just love the possibilities. So everybody I think the acetate strip is really fun. Like, it really, I don't know, it just adds even more to it, you know? Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to take another little splash and I'm going to tuck it behind the hillside on the left. Just like so. And then we've got our little walking bear. I'm going to add him. I'm going to put a little dot runner under on his feet, on the back of his feet. And I'm going to add him to the front. He's going to check out what Troublemaker's up to over here. And I love when you put things in front of and behind the hills or the grass, depending on which you use, because it yep. gives it that really cool dimension. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is actually decorate the back hillside. And the reason why I like to do that is because the acetate circle, there's so many options you can do with that. So I rather get my, my main elements to my scene put in because the clouds and the rain droplets can go anywhere on that acetate circle, right? But I want to make sure like my cute little bear 
um, goes on here and the other puddles and all of that first so before I decide where my other stuff's going to go. So on the and, back, um, there's a question here. There's a about the bow. The bow is from the platform pop up die. It's actually included as a part of that die, but we used it in two ways. We used it on the uh, first card, and then now we're using it as a part of the platform pop up. Awesome. And so I'm going to add a little puddle um, on the back hillside. And again, keep looking what looks good for your placement, right? So I kind of have him a little bit kind of near the center, the puddle. Um, I forgot to tuck a splash behind the puddle, but I used my dot runner. So I'll still be able to add that in. Oh my gosh, so cute. And then we're gonna add our little rainy guy. So I'm gonna put Dot Runner behind his feet and put him in the puddle. I'm adding a splash to his umbrella again because I just think that looks so cute. My Dot Runner's being a brat on me. One second, you guys. Yeah, I can't find any. I can't find any paper. <laughs> How is that I left? Because at my house, I have all my craft supplies are here, and whenever I'm at my house, like I can't find paper or scissors or. Oh my god! Like, Wait, how do we not have scissors? <laughs> yeah, right. All right, so I'm adding that little rain droplet to the umbrella. And then it looks like I did add another piece of acetate back behind that back hillside to the far right um, to add another little trio droplet. Again, these are this is all whatever you want. It's going to look so cute. Whatever you guys end up doing. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys not only Grace's um, trick with the circle acetate, but even just doing little slivers of acetate really is pretty incredible, the little scenes you can build. So let me just show this, move, move the circle out of the way. So I put another little droplet here, you guys can see. And then it looks like I did one more little trio droplet, which who knows where that little piece of acetate I just cut off. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Amazing that I was able to find it um, on the far left on that back hillside. All right, I'm not going to do that one because my piece of acetate is way too small. I'm just going to put some droplets. Oh, on no, someone lost their, they lost their sentiment. That happens to me all the time. The other day I was making a card and I couldn't find the piece. And then Jacqueline texted me the next day because she found it on the floor by the door. <laughs> it must have been stuck to my clothes. And then it fell. Oh, you have to check your sleeves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so now that I have my main elements in, the clouds and the raindrops are just added like bonuses. So I actually, when I'm adding stuff to the acetate, I like to use um, the Lanfang glue tube, but you just want to not be too crazy with how much you're um, using. Um, so it doesn't ooze out a lot. And um, I wouldn't pop it up and stuff until it's all fully dry. Like as much as we love, like continuously popping it up. Um, but I just use a little bit of that glue tube and then I'm gonna add some clouds. And then we've of course got our little smiley cloud. And then the last thing that we're going to do is die cut those raindrops. <laughs> I was like, that is gonna be the very last thing because those are gonna get lost real fast. 
We have one question of uh, somebody's asking where you're adding the acetate to. What are you adding the acetate to? It's adding it to the hillside. So on the back of the stitched hillside, let me see if I can get this to show up on camera. So see the acetate's right there, but it's on the back of that hillside. And then I add dot runner behind these three droplets and I add um, that to the acetate. Hopefully that answers your question. I know, Brianne, no Prisma glitter. We use the liquid stardust. I, you know, I, we'll glitter all the things and all the other things that we do. I was just laughing when I saw that. I was like, I know they're going to go through a drawer with no glitter. Um, and I love that this set has heart raindrops. I think that is so cute, you guys. So if you wanted to switch up your card and use the heart raindrops, oh, so cute. That's really so nice for like a think when you make this more of like a thinking of you with the rain. Mm -hmm. I feel like the hearts are so sweet. So sweet. So I'm just die cutting my little raindrops because that's the very last thing I'm going to add. So hopefully I won't lose any. Oh my gosh, you guys really can see my messy desk. I'm not doing very good at pretending it's not there. Well, and then now I didn't realize people put us on a big screen. So now it's. Oh, yeah. They tell me that in my class all the time, which makes me so nervous. I don't know why. I just, in my world, I'm like, oh, they're just watching me on their little iPad. And then they're like, no, Jen, we have you on our 70-inch TV. I'm like, ah! We're <laughs> <HD. laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to very carefully add a little dot of glue tube to the acetate. And then I'm placing a raindrop into that. And remember, they're raindrops. So there is no right or wrong way of placement of these. And I did this last because um, I wanted to make sure, you know, that my bears are seen, like the focal point of my projects are seen. And Not, also so you know, you don't lose them. Well, that too, yeah. For sure that. That's what I thought the reasoning was. Well, that's the reason why we die cut them last. But I mean, oh. I didn't add the, the clouds oh, or the yes. drops to the circle until last because I wanted to make sure my important pieces all got placed. Yeah, I keep kind of like holding my holding my card and making sure that everything is, you know stuck. <laughs> and the Lawn Fawn glue tube will dry very um, clear and nice without seeing it. So if any little bit oozes like mine just did outside of your raindrops, don't worry about it. And because the acetate is pretty slippery, just place your raindrop and be good with it. The more you keep touching it, it's just going to keep slip sliding and you're just going to get frustrated. Somebody's asking I how they, you think um, of all the amazing details in the stamps and dies and that everything works together. That's the magic of Erica. Yes, that is Erica's brain. So Erica, so Lawn Fawn, if you don't know, is owned by myself, uh, my husband, Mike, and um, our friend, Erica. We all met in college um, and she is a genius and she ha it's all in her head like a library. And, um, and she puts all of these different ideas together, thinks about how everything's going to work. Uh, and, and, and so that's, it's really fun. It's really exciting to, to see things come together. She'll remember a product from a few years ago and make sure it works together. So I love that because when you, all of a sudden it makes your older supplies brand new again, because everything works together. Yeah. And then we have one more question that since we're coming to the end, are you working on summer release? I've been anxious to think about summer release and spring release is so stunning. Yes. So the summer release is going to be May 19th. That means, let me look at the date, starting May 11th, it'll be the inspiration week that leads up to the release. So starting May 11th, we'll have the big giveaway. And then each day there'll be a brand new intro video and a focus of beautiful cards from the design team. So follow along each day. And it's a fun surprise. I love waking up to surprises. So it's a fun surprise every morning to see what the next thing might be. And then the whole release will be revealed on uh, May 19th. And it's really fun. There's a, a, a really fun little different little themes of different products, just like, you know, we had the strawberries and then the rainy day bears, et cetera. We've got some fun themes coming in this one too. 
Um, definitely use tweezers to place your raindrops if you want. Um, I don't use tweezers a ton, so it's just not my nature to pick them up, but that's a great tip. Um, and if you get fingerprints on your acetate, any suggestions on how to remove it? Um, I would let everything on your project dry. And if you see fingerprints tomorrow, maybe a, dab it with a little damp wet uh, damp paper towel. Um, but I, I didn't really get rubbing, I know if a little rubbing alcohol would help. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little rubbing alcohol. But yeah. That's it, you guys. I don't want to. I don't want to pop up my platform too much, just because um, I used wet glue. But so cute. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Look how cute, right? I should hold mine up. Um, sorry, I'm like figuring figuring out what I'm doing over here. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Oh my gosh. So cute, Kelly. So much fun. It's adorable. Oh, this is so cute and sweet. I love it so much. And you guys all rocked it. Our Friday night. Yes. Uh, and I think Benji was giving us some information about a nonprofit. Benji, if you can email us at info at lawnfawn.com, that would be awesome. Cause we would love to help out if we can. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just catching up on comments. <laughs> oh, say, I don't know if there's any. Uh, rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. That is good advice. Oh, rubbing alcohol with a Q-tip. Very good advice for fingerprints. Oh, my card is, is <laughs> precariously under, under one of my papers, but it survived. <laughs> Yay. And remember, do another thick coat of glossy accents on your letters. Um. I'm going to still wait till tomorrow. Mine's still tacky to touch. And I think it just works really well if it's dry. So um, just remember to do that. Yay. Oh, everything's blurry. <laughs> I stuck off my glasses. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, no, what happened? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, no, I just, I, had, I don't normally have them on for so long because yeah. I like to live in my world of denial. And then it's like watching something in HD and going back to standard definition when I take the glasses. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh, Monique, 4.15 in the morning. Oh She's in the gosh. Netherlands. Thank she lost her so water much. droplets. She's going to do them again tomorrow. Definitely do them tomorrow. Oh my You'll gosh, probably yeah. find them. I know it was a late night tonight. We try to switch up the times because different times are better for different people, depending on what you've got going on in your life. So it's kind of fun to do a Friday night here. <laughs> yeah. Just switching it up, keeping you guys on your toes. Um, we will figure out when we're going to do our summer release, create with us. Um, and we'll make sure we're, we announce that on Lawn Fawn's social media, my social media, blog posts. We try to, we do emails. We try to let you guys know as much as we can. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And we're excited about that. I know we've got to start planning that one. It's, I know. I was thinking hard to pick to what talk. we do. I, I was know. like, I was like, oh, I don't know how many cards I need to make for upcoming shows or anything. So yeah, we got to talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. We're always planning so far ahead here. I know. Oh my gosh. Um, and remember, if you guys joined us late, you'll be able to catch the replay on YouTube and Facebook. It comes up pretty quick after we stop broadcasting. Um, so, and it'll be there. So you guys can watch it later this weekend or next weekend, whenever you guys would like. Definitely download the handout. The link is on the bottom of the screen um, because that's just a great resource. Even if you totally stray from it, it just might help get those creative juices flowing. And we had a really great question, and that's where do you sign the cart of a platform pop-up? So one of the things I like to do is I like to write my message here. So and maybe instead of stamping or maybe just stamping one thing, and then you can write underneath. The other thing I've done is I've actually uh, cut a little piece of paper and folded it in half, like a pretty pattern paper, and put it on the back. And that way you can flip it up, you can write more, and it's also covered up if, if like you don't want to have your handwriting on the back of it. So that's a really fun thing to do too. So there's lots of cool different ways. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Wait. So this one, which I need to send to Erica, but I keep using it as an example. Um, but see on this one here, I put some strawberries. So this is the front. It's got my little strawberries on it. And on the back, I put a little trio of strawberries and then I have my message inside. 
uh, here. So this is a really fun way to add. The other thing you could do is just put a, a little rectangle across the whole back and right across the whole back if you use the add-on. So that's a lot of different ways. If this particular card, since we did a lot of stamping on the back, you could also just include a little a little note card on the inside or a little like, yeah. or yeah, or just cut like a stitched rectangle and write your message that, and then this becomes more of like a display. So that's kind of fun too. Yeah. Oh, 530 in the morning in Finland. Thank you guys so oh much. Oh, everybody. <laughs> but, but these crazy hours. Wow. Thank you. Oh my gosh. And I know this was a long one since we made an interactive card. So we really appreciate you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you guys had fun. I know it was like a long class, but I wanted to make sure I used Liquid Stardust like you guys asked. Um, and I really wanted to do a platform pop up with you guys because I just know how much everybody is really enjoying that die. So hopefully, hopefully a lot of you seem to stick with us. So that was great. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you. We appreciate you guys so much. Just getting to be able to create with you live is so much fun. So we really appreciate you guys. And before we go, I just want to mention if you guys want to join me in my rain or shine class again, it's April 16th. So um, you, if you had the supplies for tonight, you have pretty much everything we're going to use in rain or shine. So we're going to make three cards. Yeah, we make three cards. I had to think about it. We make three cards in class and then I give two bonus cards. The coloring guides are going to be different. So the bears are still brown, but I'm coloring everything else a little bit differently. So you'll have even more resources. Um, it's $20. You get access forever. It's, it's a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. And we've got those linked in both the comments on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and uh, someone's going to finish up after class. It was someone's first platform pop up, which I love that. Yay. Thank you, Rebecca and Shari for commenting behind the scenes. We Thank appreciate you so it. Much. We appreciate you guys. It's nice to be in the same room as yes. you again, Rebecca. Last time we were in different locations. That's and two times. I know. And I saw someone mention, asked if Mimi was going to be in the next class. Oh my goodness. I wish she lives in Miami. So we're, we're trying to plan a summer visit for her. So, um, so we're really excited about that. So my dad and I have to figure out sometimes cause he goes and flies with her to come out here. So, um, if you guys saw our last class, my grandmother, Mimi, who's 95, uh, came and said hi. So <laughs> she's so <laughs> adorable. Really and you guys yeah. would, I mean, I know a lot of you were with us. You would never guess she's 95. She looks amazing. Yeah, no, we do not. No one understands. She's ageless. It's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing. wild. I'm just hoping that's like some kind of genetic thing that's going <laughs> to <laughs> I always joke. I look a lot like her and, and I just joke. I'm giant Mimi because I'm five, eight and she's four foot 10. So we are a funny combo together. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you guys so much, Kelly. Do you think we need to say anything else or? I don't think so. Thank you guys so much. We're so thrilled. Uh, we'll see you guys back, um, I'm guessing, in June. And um, and that release is May 19th. So May, well, we've got Inspiration Week coming up April 15th. And then May 11th, we'll have our release week leading up to the release. So we've got a lot of fun things going on. Jen has her incredible classes. Jen and Shari are teaching again together. So there's so many fun and cool things coming up. So we're really thrilled to hopefully see you in a lot of those things. Yay. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.